Oh, uh, oh, yes, I think. Hello. Hey, everybody. <laughs> How are we doing? I haven't turned your volume. Huh? Volume, volume's down. Hey, how you going, everybody? Uh, I am Venicella. <laughs> this is Thorums Five, and we are Face Grip. Um, oh, look, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be um, introducing us like that all the time now. That is so. awful. I hate every moment of that. I'm so glad you do. Um, <laughs> welcome to session twenty-six of our. Uh, adventure in Eberron. Um, this particular one, if you haven't, if you haven't, if you haven't been reminded uh, seven thousand times by this amazing group, uh, Paths Unnumbered is what it's called. Um, so, I guess before we start, uh, once again, I just want to shout out you guys. So, thank you so much. Um, as you can see, backdrop now is the Corvarian map. Um, lovingly put up by Barclays, so thank you so much Barclays, and, and purchased by you guys, amazing, thank you so much. Um, also, uh, once again, shout out to Last Nerds on Earth, um, I had an amazing time uh, recording with them, and they're just a bunch of really, really nice, great uh, podcasters, so if, if you get a chance, jump on, uh, and listen to them, uh, and listen to me bumble my way through my very first podcast. Uh, it was really, really uh, cool. It was lots of fun. You were actually you really good. <laughs> really good. But um, if anyone here hasn't already listened to it, you can listen to it on Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. Mm. Exactly right. Uh, I think, uh, I'm pretty sure, I mean, we've got three over 350 followers now on Twitter, and I'm just super, 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 super... Un just overwhelmed, so, so everybody there, so thank you so much. Uh, do you guys want to talk about anything? Um, do we, if we haven't already, <laughs> we're going to shout out to Meeples and Dragons. Go for it. Um, run by a wonderful uh, duo, Sarah and John, who we can't wait to meet um, this coming Friday. So exciting. Um, Meeples and Dragons is a Brisbane-based um, tabletop role play store online that sources um, both independent creators and larger creators if they can't find a product that someone else creates they help source and create that and they get involved very actively amongst the um, tabletop role play community um, you can find them on twitter at meeples underscore and underscore dragons i believe i'm sorry if i got that wrong um <laughs> otherwise meeples and dragons um chuck it into google you'll find their store there i may have a gift for everyone in this group Coming from that store very shortly. Is it meeples or meatballs? Meeples. Okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> That's so disrespectful. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm just um, confused. <laughs> but yeah, awesome meeples. guys. So sorry. It's now available. Awesome guys. Um, can't wait to meet you guys. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. No. Everything. Amazing. Um, can't wait. Ooh. Thorum. Yeah, um, if you're catching the stream for the very first time, you might want to watch some older episodes that we have. Yeah. So twitch.com, sorry, twitch.tv slash Vanek Elder keeps the last two episodes up. However, it falls off every two weeks. So the episode that's no longer going to no longer be available is episode 24, Truths. So if you want to watch that, that'll be going live on the YouTube channel tonight. And any time that uh, you want to catch any episodes that are older than the last two weeks, yeah. they'll be going live on the <coughs> YouTube channel at the same time that we stream. Awesome. No, great shout out. Thank you so much, uh, Thorum. One last one. Vin Please, Diesel, If um, <laughs> speaking to your manager, make sure you check your DMs. And um, if you're down under, come check us out. Absolutely. Oh my God. Please do come, Vin Diesel. We have space at the table for you. We'll shave our heads. <laughs> uh, you guys will all shave my hands in tribute. I'm not shaving my hands. And we'll wear a bald cap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vin Diesel, um, we're sorry. Uh, we're so sorry, but please come to us and, uh, and and be a guest here when you are in Australia, obviously. Good old <laughs> yeah, down under. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Oh, I have one more. Please. Um, so I commissioned a art piece as well, and I got that sometime last week. Um, it's really hard to see, but I posted it on my Twitter. Um, I'll retweet it as well. It's, I think it might be retweeted on the fake script one. Um, uh, but uh, she, the person who did it, her name is Laura, I believe. Um, that's her Twitter handle. Uh, Laura's Line Art. It is L-A-U-R-A-S-L-I-N-E-A-R-T. Um, 
uh, on Twitter and she has a really cool style. I think it's like really kind of like fairy tale-esque, kind of very colourful, um, super lovely to work with, um, based in Brazil. So yeah, yeah check her out. Cool. She's got some cool stuff out there. Awesome. I just, I mean, in awe of the fact that you got connected with someone from all the way overseas and it just happened to be such an amazing photo, as, uh, sorry, picture as well. Um, awesome. Yeah, I really like that. That's really cool. Cool. Anything else you guys want to say before we... Don't kill us. Don't kill you? How... Make naive. everything in the shops cheap. Did you say that's <laughs> So under, <laughs> under 200 gold is sufficient? I mean, is there a, a maximum amount of gold you, know, you want? You my bank account, but you might have to talk in the teens. In the teens? Yeah. What? <laughs> Jeez. Um, I, I don't know if you remember, but Barclays the Viper... It's in rich. a certain uh, bag, <laughs> might have some of Bicelli's, um goods. Anyway, yeah, you've, got uh, 80, you've got 800. You haven't divvied up the prize money. Zinged. Let's. I did. Let's let's get <laughs> let's get into it then. Uh, welcome to episode 26, Paths Unnumbered. <laughs> so, Thorum's five, you. Having rescued your ally, Osei, from a fate unknown, took to the Sleeping Snake, an inn in the cogs of Shan, to track down Bicelu, the leader of the Venerables, a thieves guild in Shan and beyond, and an enemy of yours, having tried to kill you for the draconic prophecy you kept in your possession. You eluded the potential illusions and traps and found her. Surrounded by allies, including the Warforged who tried to kill Rook, and Count Bavi of the Twelve Archmages of Arcanix. The battle began in earnest after Amara snuck around and grabbed a prophecy by Selyu was writing, and you fought for your lives. Yeah, she did. While Fariso aided, and Orlix, the halfling, dangled by a chain helpless. With bow, sword, staff, and spell, you did fight with Thorum saving some of you from certain death. With Gunnar interrupting powerful magics in Bicelu, you survived, felled the mistress and her allies, but saw that she was all of them in illusionary disguise, and Frazo Blue, the Arc Devil, consumed her physical form, warning you all of your inevitable failure in defeating his plans. You are resting, currently, in her hideout, wounded slightly, but victorious, with Fariso gone, promising when he returns, he will destroy any evidence that this sanctum had ever existed. So, you had just moved all of the parchments that were in the area. Um, on her desk, into the bag. A staff, a pair of gloves, a peculiar looking necklace with a gold square at the end. What would you like to do? Is there a crossbow? There was also a crossbow. And some potions. And some potions. Good. <clears throat> Thank you, Barclays. So, the moment is yours. Did anyone pick up the cloak with all the eyes on it? Yeah. You did get it. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. <clears throat> Got the many eyed oh. cloak. That's what I wrote down. Can I do just another um, perception check and um, make an observation of the room, see if there's anything that um, might pique interest from. that we may have missed from last session? Yeah, sure. Make a perception check. If I'm going to do the same thing, I just assist on this turn. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to roll separately or give him advantage? Do you roll? You are. I feel like you're luckier than I am. Gunnar, <laughs> do you have the cloak in your hand? Remember, I'll twice. Put it in my bag. Oh, you pack it up? Uh, you're going to get advantage. Did you want to? Uh, I like cloaks. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> 18 on the perception level. 18? <clears throat> yeah. So when you're looking around and Rook sort of taps you on the shoulder and, and points to other areas of the room just to make sure you've, you've noticed, but you have a pretty good sense that so far, apart from the bar barrels where the ingots were kept, 
the throne, the desk now that has been completely emptied and all of its contents put into the bag. Nothing else seems unusual about the place. You see wisps of dried, dead skin of what was part of the bodies of the mistress or her clones. Menides? The actual person? No. Um, you had a good look around prior to prior to last session, and uh, sorry, last session, and you didn't see any sort of evidence that would indicate that he has been here. No. Gunnar? Um, I did start a short rest, but I think I need to roll off the getting the dagger. Yes, you did. Um, has there been any time to resume that, or? Should we just get out here? <laughs> there hasn't been time to resume it yet, no. Do you guys want to go? Yes. Yeah, so you're going to them later? I think we can go. I think we have everything we need. Yeah. I think we're going to have a hard enough rest and a little bit tired, yeah? Why do you want to do a little scout to see if they're... No. No, I'm ready. Question for us. Has he went with three of them? He's still, still with you. He's weak, looking down at him. The blackened skin where the poison affected him underneath greatly had, has subsided. He is alive thanks to Thorum's crushing of the diamond and using it in the spell of Revivify. And he is not talking, looking around in a little bit of wonder, but otherwise peaceful. I have a choice. <clears throat> And grab him on the shoulder. Uh, my young friend, I've seen you and they've had better days, and I hand him a question here. Weakly, this thin, withered hand takes it and he uncorks it and goes goes to town. He, he takes it all in one, in a couple of gulps. Which one? Uh, the uh, common one, two, you four, plus two. Roll for that healing for me. Plus six. Plus six? Okay. <laughs> he seems better. You can see that whatever remnants of the uh, this black skin has now subsided completely, um, whereas just before the potion you saw that there were still some patches um, where this torn uh, shirt that he was wearing you could see underneath. Uh, you can see now his colour is coming back to his skin uh, from a very, very pale to a, to a pinky, uh, rosy look. He looks up at you and just gives you a nod. Well, uh, if, if possible, I, I will take my leave and, and do and do as what you say. Go go to Gatherhold and and on my way tell of Thorum's five and and the the journey you've had and the victory here. Um, we, we're obviously not not mentioning you, Amara. No, I would prefer that. That's okay. Maybe call Thorum's four. That I will. <laughs> Uh, still alive. Maybe always could be some use if we head back to the town. Back to the inn. I kneel down to him and kind of give him a look over. Are you, are you sure you're okay to the court on your own in your state? He sort of stretches a little bit, sort of holds his back. Yeah, yes, uh, I, I can spend a day of rest uh, back at the inn, but uh, after that I, I will take my leave. Uh, Who's, who will look after the golden crash? I, I was just about to ask. Uh, I have contacts, uh, also of House Galanda. A brother, uh, perhaps, um, well, a brother twice removed. But perhaps I can call on him just for just temporarily. He's very trustworthy. I see. Well, I'll, I'll just hand him a little bit of um, parchment and I have a quill. <laughs> Be sure you take the time to recall what you saw here. The brilliance of Thorum's Five. Make sure you write down everything that you saw. Very well. Actually, I have someone that is following me as well. I don't know if you should mention my name either. 
Two rooms, three then. No, I think the five is fine. Just maybe don't say our names. Just okay. Forget okay. To mention them. So, uh, so you you are okay if I do mention your name? Absolutely. Describe him very detailed. He was shorter than you expected. A little. Um, <laughs> he sort of uh, glances at you and gives you a curious look through him as you just look up into nowhere and <laughs> as you stay as you say that. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, feel free to, to to stay back at the Cog and Fresh, uh, but uh, well, are you are you following, or will you stay for a while? Let's follow. I think we should join you, Wallace, and uh, maybe we should inform you of some information that may keep you safe on your journey and whom to look out for. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Please. Then let's not hurry. Let's go. And go. <laughs> with the goods that you have. You start making your way back out of this green-tinged home hideout of the once mistress. Thorum, you were going to do something? No, not at all. I was going to follow quietly. Okay. As you make your way back up the stairs, which was once also clouded in trickery and gave you a sense that the there was another level before this, you make your way up into that bare room which made up the the level of the inn but you find that just before you go to the very very top a small gap about uh, just a very small gap only big enough to crawl through has been made and around it rubble it seems as though this inn has completely collapsed on itself Bits of carpentry, wood, metal, uh, metal bits, metal poles are uh, just twisted and felled all around you as you look up to that entranceway. But there is a small space, crawling space that is never, never, uh, that, that is available to navigate through. You feel like the rumbling that this arc devil made when it when it made that small earthquake as it left might have caused this. Well, this feels like a room you may be able to slither through. Because I'm a viper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, yeah, can I look down, down the, the, the gap, the hole, and see if we can see anything? Yeah, perception check. We'll see. I see nothing. <laughs> um, oh wait, that's just... I don't see what. Um, no, I didn't. Okay. Uh, do you have dark vision? Yeah. You do? Uh, yeah, you see. You, you actually see and hear things. And as you look through the gap, you see very clearly the, the other end. And it's the same, about the same amount of distance as you figured the, the, this room that you first entered is. You can see a gap that leads out into the cogs proper. Um, the area known as Black Bones, which you, it, it's, it's a district in the Cogs, um, it's a clear path. And there's that, that light red glow that comes from the outside of it, where you can hear from there murmurs, mm -hmm. um, a small moan of sadness coming from the other end, echoing through the gap. Right. It looks just like the Cogs through there, except. His sadness. Gentlemen. Maybe whoever went this way did other things. Shall we go down through there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just let us know if you need a hand. No, I mean, like, not like that. Um, is this somewhere I can potentially try and shadow ban? You can, you can, you can easily shadow step to the very, excuse me, very, very entrance of. Uh, the inn, or where the inn's door once was, but you can't go any further, you can't quite see anything outside of there, okay. in, in actually the cogs. Mm. Maybe not then. I don't know, I don't, I honestly, I think after what we've gone through today, maybe we should just go. Let's just, let's not even entertain anything else. Is this the other way out? Looking around, it seems to be the one one passage. So that's not, so that's not like, let's go out, but I don't think we should 
all over the surface. But that's, that's where it's coming from. I guess I'll just head down. Yep. Look outside. Okay. Yeah. I'll follow it as well. Yep. So Barclays and Namara, you start to crawl your way through. You get Barclays, you get to the very, very end and, and the entrance, and you look out and you see what looks to be pieces of what were what was the roof of the inn of the Sleeping Snake. Uh, crumbled and in front of you but moreover you see that it's the morning is just dawning now because you recall coming into this fight quite early in the morning and as you look up and you see the uh, the sunlight just start to come in this orange and yellow looking around you the lava river has broken and you can see the passage that it that that this river took has broken its banks and is now flowing wider and is probably only a few meters away from you whereas before it was quite quite a number of meters you can see as well all manner of beings you can see goblins uh, humans dwarves warforged a few orcs looking on in fascination towards you and towards this broken in now um you see one particular human, hands in his face, weeping as you follow his gaze and you see this figure in the lava, um, dead and just floating and slowly burning the bones that are left of the flesh, uh, the flesh that's left on the bones burning and slowly going into the lava. So very recent. Is it just me? At the moment, Amara's behind you, but she can't see anything with you in front. And how, how much room do we have? Is there enough room that we can all stand? No, it's it's only a very small gap. Only one of you can go through at a time. Oh, and, and once crawl. we get to the other side. Once you get to the other side, yeah. you are technically out in the open. Okay. It's okay to come through. We can all stand on a little platform that we have. It's not a free site. I'll, I'll come through. Yep. Yeah, I'll... I'll just follow Barclays when he comes. <laughs> okay. I come through as well and I say, Barclays from behind is never a pretty sight when I'm looking at you. Come on. I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh, Gunnar, are you following? Are you yeah, doing anything else? I'll head out. Oh, yeah. Yep. You all make your way out and you see the same scene. Probably a good 25 to 30 mixed. Um, <laughs> Mixed work, mix, a mixing of workers, <clears throat> perhaps citizens, traders, people that were possibly just uh, uh, going past when whatever rumbling below the earth hit. And you can see now the row of houses that were, so you're looking out, the lava flow is to your right, the row, the row of houses are to your left. Some of them have roofs caved in. One of them towards the uh, other side is uh, completely caved in and destroyed. These, these houses did, don't seem to be too well built. Uh, and they seem to be just homes. But you see people that are already tr starting to help each other um, make, the, make the way clear and, and clean up after whatever's happened. Uh, is it Orlix with us? Orlix is a bit ahead of you. He's sort of looking around in wonder a little bit, but he's a, a bit ahead of you. I was going to ask him, Alex, maybe we could um, extend some charity if the inn's still in good condition. Yes, uh, he sort of turned around. Uh, how so, sir? We've got rooms there. I'll see, I will see it done. He sort of turns around and says, uh, I, We're not sure what happened here, but the cog and fresh is open and free uh, for all that are in, uh, are in need uh, for, for a bed. And as, you, as he sort of shouts this out in the general area, you see a couple of people sort of look over and, oh, yeah, it's good. And you can see uh, one or two pairs starting to make their way from wherever home that they, that they did live in. As soon as, like, that is shouted out, like, Amara will just go, Osei, Ose, Osei's back at the Cog and Fresh. We need to go and check on, o on Osei. Mm. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Yeah, and I'm just like, speed walking. 
Okay. Uh, go on. Are we all out in the... Yep. Uh, yep. Can yes. I see if anybody's helping anybody around in this area? Or is it, is it in a cave collapse? Or? It looks as though the inn has collapsed completely around you. Yeah. Looking back at the, at the sleeping snake, you see it's completely destroyed. Uh, the same ruin of uh, wood, metal, uh, stonework that, that hugged that cave on, on the very end seem to just be uh, uh, completely gone. Uh, you do see that there are some people uh, helping others when it comes to looking at wounds that they might have been uh, afflicted with uh, during this, this quick tremor. Mm. You see one Warforge sort of put his... Uh, metallic hand on this weeping gentleman who's looking out at this corpse uh, that's in the lava and he seems to be consoling him uh, there are a couple of goblins that are just trying to together move small pieces of, of cement or, or stone away from uh, building entrances and uh, humans and dwarves are sort of uh, also helping but doing it one, one themselves uh, just, just clearing the way, basically. Yeah, it, and is it obvious as to why this is this caved in from the battle that we just? To your best knowledge, that tremor was probably strong enough to yeah. do to do some damage like this. I might see if I can lend any hands to any anybody who's in need at this moment for okay. a, for a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, go on, Thor. Are there any people that have like minor? There are, there are a few. You can see scrapes. You can see uh, someone has a, has a pretty big open leg wound um, and is sort of just holding it. Another is taking out some bandages and trying to see if they can, uh, uh, I guess, do some sort of fix uh, short term. So that's like three people total? Yes. So I'm going to try and help them out and see if I can <laughs> you still got a spell remaining, spell slot, well done. One third level spot remaining. Nice. I'm not going to use it. Use <laughs> <laughs> my second level oh, slot. These um, to cast Prayer of Healing on... How is the rest of... Um, how are you guys looking? Gunner is bleeding. Gunner, as well, is going to include in the six potential characters there, so those two plus Gunner. I'm bruised, yep. but I'm... So... Heal me. I'm below. Okay. I'm great, and I'm just checking to make sure I haven't already had a rest. Sweet. Uh, Rook and Amara are also included nope. in that one. I haven't had a rest. That was still good. So that comes to... You're sparkly. I am. I'm shiny. Yeah, she is included in that. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. That's 15 points of healing. Damn. Sounds good. Yeah, to all of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm good now. I take a little bit back as well because right over the surplus. Um, you didn't get anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you cast the divine magics, you can see that a lot of these wounds are now completely healed, and just some scarring remains. And you sort of, with the power that you provided, you feel like mm -hmm. that was sufficient mm -hmm. to at least prevent certain death from anyone. Uh, loss of blood and things like that, but you um, you notice actually, Thorum, that you and actually yourself as well, Rook, as Amara is racing away, not really paying too much attention to the, her surroundings, you both notice that there are two sets of uh, two small groups of people that are not really looking at um, the wounded or even the broke or uh, the, the broken down houses they're looking directly at where you just came out of but they're ignoring you all you see that there are there's a light blue and black patterned robed um pair and you also see a another pair they are just completely white and yellow robed um hoods over their heads and they're separate they are separate from each other um and the two pairs are just looking at and investigating the, the the rubble. And they really do stand out from the common folk in this area. No, no one else looks like they're wearing robes or, uh, or, or that sort of vestige. 
Gorham's gonna tell anyone who's not yet fully healed and wants to survive is to go to the Temple of Ado to be healed for free. Okay. They're mentioning when they go there. Okay. <laughs> Your affiliate code. Your affiliate code, yeah. Like and subscribe. <laughs> can you can you do me a favor, Thorn? Can you just make a straight charisma check, please? <laughs> yeah, add that uh, zero modifier. Yeah. That's actually plus one. That is a. Is it just straight charisma? Straight charisma check. Hey, it's sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Ooh. Almost immediately, you see a few. Um, a few that are still limping, no visible wounds, but perhaps a sprained ankle or a sprained arm. Uh, they seem to look around and give you a bit of a nod. A couple say thank, uh, thanks to you, a uh, human and a dwarf particularly, and they start to, start to slowly, slowly make their way um, away from you. Good, <laughs> get away. <laughs> so as, a, as Amara is leaving quickly, does anyone else have anything else they'd like to do in this vicinity? I would follow. Um. Rook, when you had a look, just just to be aware, yeah, you were you were directed by a couple of uh, dwarves to just try and move some rubble out of the way of a doorway. Mm. Um, as you did that, out came two children, um, dirt and filthy, but alive. One of them with a bit of a, a bit of a gash on his arm, um, human children, and a mother. Um, this light green, small fanged woman of, mm. of a green skin. Um, you feel like half orc and she leads them out, gives you a bit of a thanks and, uh, and slowly also follows the crowd, the small crowd that's going to Edo. I say to York, um, if you, if you and your kidney assistants head to the common fresh. <sighs> Thank you. Um, uh, How's it? Am I close to? Yep. Do I notice the kid with the, the gash on his arm? You do. Sorry. Mm. You there. Your arm. Doesn't look good. Let me take care of that for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> he sort of, he sort of, he, this, this six year old sort of child puts his arm out eagerly. Um, you can see that there are dried tears. You can see that he's he's had a bit of a, a sad time, um, and as he just holds his hand out in preparation. Uh, as as um, I'll cast the healing word. Barclay is doing that as the woman still with the children. Yes, yeah, she is. Can I ask? Uh, the building in Rano has this been crumbled by the the building beside it. No, uh, something has happened. Uh, um, in common, she's replying. I, I don't quite know what, what occurred, but there was, there was an earthquake of some kind. Are there any other buildings around affected? Uh, not apart from this strip, no. Um, can, can I look down, down the strip and see if like, the, the, the onset of the building that we were in has collapsed on top of anything else, or is it the buildings themselves? Just the buildings themselves, it seems. Um, and the purple and gold people are still still there. They are. Um, they're still they're, they're behind you now, and you've made your way forward. They are the the um, white and gold, white and yellow are still on one side of that end, looking at it. Um, I say to Amara, mm, Amara, Amara is way ahead of you. Okay, cool. Um, in which case. <laughs> Do not write right next to you. Oh, I was, was going to say that in Paragon. But what do you think of the others? I, I wish to attend, attend to some of these people, people before we head back, back but um, I can't help but notice these two clusters uh, and that point in the direction of the, the two that are dressed in the white and the cob and then the two that are dressed in the purple and the black. Uh, light blue, black. Light blue, black. black. I'm almost like trying to heal this kid's, 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 kid's arm, arm here. Uh, yeah, what do you think? I don't know. Shall I go to Are they armed? Um, I don't know. Looking at them, you don't seem to see any weapons, but they are robed, so what they have underneath, um, you're not sure. What do you think they have underneath their robes? <laughs> <laughs> 
Barclays, uh, put my hand on his shoulder. I just understand you're better at finding out what's on the people's shoulder than I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I rest. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you can see his eyes. <laughs> <It's like laughs> we are all paying attention. <laughs> I know I wasn't. Um, he, his eyes are just wide as he. You watch this this uh, this cut uh, seal up without an issue. I oh, thank you very much. He has this very very um, uh, very uh, large lisp that he's got on him. That's okay. <laughs> Run along. If you people are strong, you'll be fine. With long. And he starts to uh, make his way towards his mother. Um, yeah, leave it to me. How far away are those people? Yeah. About ten feet away. Okay, I'm just going to pull my um, viol, which I for so long thought was a loot. This <laughs> <laughs> viol. In between a violin and a cello in no, my size. Yeah. yeah. So somehow I'm just. Yeah, okay. Well, but I'm making I'm some. I'm so scared to see what that looks like on the street. No, I am making some wonderful music right now. I'm trying to calm everyone down a little bit. Right. You know, and just. It looks like he's digging a hole. Yeah. But as I'm walking closer to those people that we noticed, I'm like. Oh, sorry there. First of all, performance check, please. I know you're interested in the roles. Where's the man melting in the lava? Is that close by as well? The man melting in the lava. The the figure is just to your left. Uh, sorry, to your right. Yes. Uh, I paid a bit more attention to that. Um, sure. Yeah. What'd you roll? Uh, Seventeen. Everyone does seem to turn and, and sort of, you, you see a visible calming in the area. You seem to have made in some sort of effect on most of them. Although, the two groups of robed figures ignore you until you do uh, a accidentally elbow one of them. And is it the white and yellow robed, one of the white and yellow robed, or the light blue and black? They're both, they're, they're in pairs. Sure. So they, they're just, they're, they're two pairs? Yellow and... Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, you do this and he sort of stumbles a little bit. You can see a very tall uh, elf look back at you. He has these piercing green eyes and golden yellow skin and a very, very long, elongated face with a, with a very pointed chin. He says, in common, yeah, that's quite all right. Can I help you? Yeah, sorry, I'm just um, trying to lighten the mood around here. Everyone's, Everyone's going, going that way. You, 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 I think I, I ran into you because you're, you're just standing here. Yeah, not just standing. If you please, we have an investigation to perform. Unless you are uh, aiding us? What? Uh, just move along, will you? Aiding you? Um, well, I think I'm aiming everyone with this fine music. But it is quite fine, what yes. What are you investigating? We're investigating the earthquake. Did you not feel it? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, uh... And thank what, you. What have you found? It's just, it's just a, a tremor. A normal tremor in the cogs. He sort of rolls his eyes as he... You can see he's visibly becoming a bit impatient. We have found resi residual magics in the area, and we are trying to keep everyone away from the site. Ah, oh, yes, I've heard there was some unusual things in the site just down there. Who are you pointing? Mr. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the way of where I'm pointing. So I'm pointing at Rook. But on the other side of Rook is the serpent's... Um, the sleeping snake? The sleeping snake, yes. That is, in fact, where they're investigating. Yeah. That, that's what right they're... Right in front of Yes. Have we... Oh, okay. No. Right. We have not. No. No. I'm, I'm actually going to catch up tomorrow if I right. can. I'm so just going to quite fast. Yeah, Gunnar, you are... Um, actually, just make an, make an athletics check for me. How are you doing this game? <laughs> <laughs> right. Negative 
Minus two. <laughs> okay. You do not see where Amara has gone whatsoever. So hide here, let's go. <laughs> uh, I'm still, still really like Thor. Thor. You are you are still catching up to Thorum, but Amara's gone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was, was, am I still whispering? He's a bit further away. He's probably about 15, 20 feet away from you. Mm. Well, well then. Good luck. Cheerio. And, and to you, sir. And he sort of gives you a quick and uh, just turns it. Make a make an arcana check, please. That was a nut one. That was a nut one. Yay! That was the second one of the night, and that was what? We've had four rolls this evening. So again, last night in the... Session, I rolled like four nat twenties, like in a row. It was so good. I know, I'm gonna suck. What'd you roll? In total. In two? Okay. Uh, your mind, for just a brief moment, completely goes blank. And you forget what you said for a moment. Nothing else happens. I just look at him like, mm, that guy is, but, but I remember the photos. <laughs> you take a mental picture. What's the mask called, actually? It's quite fine, yeah, in actual quite fact. Quite fine. Yeah. What are you doing, Rook? Oh, yes, you're looking at the, this figure. This skeletal figure is now, has now disappeared or burnt underneath the lava. Or a combination, and you can smell the flesh from where you are. It gives you a bit of a, a weird feeling in the stomach, and the sad and human male with this black straight hair down to his shoulders, this muscular figure, uh, just sort of looks at the war force that's still consoling him silently. Looks at you, gives you a bit of a, a bit of a nod. Um. Ooh. Can, Can I ask the Warforge uh, what happened? The Warforge turns to you, this uh, very wide-faced, built, uh, metallic humanoid, and he says, Well, it seems to be that my companion's wife tripped. And she fell when the tremors hit. They were simply walking. And she fell. Uh, Unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed. Has your friend and yourself have somewhere to be tonight? Uh, he's staying with me. Yes. Never mind uh, your hospitality, I heard. But we are strong we will make do i appreciate it friend um and i guess i look down to the man who's probably the back to me yeah and um uh i'm not sure if your friend or you of the godly kind but um may or and find uh, your friend's passage to whatever heavens they Believe in quick. He says to you, Thank you, friend. Uh, we worship Moradin, the dwarven gods, but uh, it is something that seems unfair now, but he always has a reason. We will pray, and we appreciate your blessing. Um, and yeah, I think I, I look, I would look down at the gentleman, um, with, with sadness as well. That's a horrible accident and turn back to Barclays, which I'm assuming is looking smug. I'm playing my thing and people are enjoying themselves. And, um, I turn and head towards. Okay. <clears throat> Thorum, Gunnar, and Amara. 
Amari, you get to the inn very quickly and you see that behind you, a small crowd is starting to make their way towards you with the invitation that you did still overhear Orlick's oh, offer. I was going to say, that would be very unsettling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you did hear him uh, in, in the distance yell and offer this. And you are at the door, um, and the door is slightly open. You hear the beginnings and of, uh, of the sounds of a breakfast. Mm. And you can see within and smell within these hams and fruits and vegetables uh, being made around the tables. Uh, for a few patrons, actually, and one of them is Osei. You see her sitting on a table by herself, her back facing the wall on the right-hand side, about halfway down, a table over from where you guys sat. Okay. And um, she's sort of uh, with her hands, slowly nibbling on a, a pear, it seems. Okay, I, like, visibly exhale, like I just did, um, just out of relief. And I'm going to make my way over to the table, try not to startle her, <laughs> um, and sit down and say, thank God, you are okay. <laughs> oh, say. <laughs> she sort of looks up at you and just gives you a bit of a, <laughs> I am, thank you. Uh, it, I couldn't have really done it without you all. Uh, where are your companions? Um, did you feel the tremor? I did. Uh, it is actually what woke me up from my slumber. It's unsettling. Um, we went to um, find Vaiselu, and um, she is very dead now. Her eyes sort of widen. And, and the prophecies? Um, she was holding one. Um, and I managed to steal it from her. Um, when I went down there, we weren't intending, I, I wasn't, I can't speak for the others, but I wasn't expecting to see, I wasn't expecting to see her sitting at a desk and scribing what I can only assume were prophecies, almost as though she was writing them for us. I see. She was speaking to a bunch of ethereals that, I mean, turned out to be parts of her. It's very confusing, um, but she's gone now. Did you manage to find anything on her person that might glean more information? Um, if I'm going to be honest, I was pretty shaken by the entire experience. Um, I know I didn't do much investigating myself, but I do know that Barclays grabbed a ton of stuff. I know that Gunnar picked up this cloak full of eyes that just, it felt like it was, it could see us anywhere. Um, we picked up a crossbow. There was a bunch of different things that everyone else kind of picked up. They're not far behind. Uh, did, did you all survive? We're, we're, we all survived. Very barely. <sighs> She, she just breathes a sigh of relief. Her, her red glowing eyes, uh, familiar to you once again, and this pale skin, very, very small fangs as she speaks on the top and the bottom visible. Oh, that's, that is very fortunate. I'm, I'm relieved. Uh, and by this stage, Thorum and Gunnar, you have now entered and you see Amara has already sat with Osei. Are you guys doing anything at this point? Okay, you looking for anything in particular? Um, no, any sort of no minor injuries amongst them? Are there any of them who uh... by, this, by the time you guys, uh, you two, uh, arrived at the inn, the, the majority of the people that Orlix had invited had have now come in and, and taken seats, and the food that uh, some of these patrons are bringing out, they also share. Uh, Orlix is... Uh, has just entered with you as well, and he's starting to move around, giving everyone sort of the nod of approval to just hand out food where required. Uh, you see uh, no injuries 
in this crowd of people. A lot of these, uh, most of these people are, are did not, uh, didn't seem to get affected by the, these tremors, or if they had, you not, you don't notice it. Um, but they are numbered in the, in the now. It's a quite a full place of about forty to fifty. Uh, but no, you don't see injuries. Uh, I'm going to help Lloyd's and distribute food, move amongst them, and try and learn more about what happened as the end collapsed. All right. Okay. Um, make an investigation check for me. Gunner, or oh, Amara, you see Gunner sit beside you, and I say, sort of looks over. Ah, it has been a while, friend. Are you well? You seem slightly injured. Yeah, I'm okay. It's, um, I just need a rest, I think. A rest well. It sounds like you've done such an enormous deed here. Look, you, you've, you've managed to possibly undo potential disaster. If yeah, I would be surprised if anyone else would really understand what these draconic prophecies were, let alone how to manipulate them. There's something else. Um, Aunt Babby, she was there. She was an ally. Well, mm. well, she, she was, um, she was vastly by failure. But she appeared as an ally. It was quite strange. These ethereals appeared as a warforged, a drow, the dreaming dark. Everything that we're, well, maybe we're scared of was there. And as it fought against us, it looked like them, it acted like them. It had their abilities, but when we killed them, it was her. Sounds ominous. And confusing. Of course. Well, perhaps, uh, perhaps there is some evidence then that hopefully Barclays has collected that might shed more light. I'm thoroughly confused myself and not, I, I do not know of these magics. Uh, they sound like they were s supposed to confuse and put you off track, perhaps. We also opened the prophecy you brought, um, which I don't know how, how relevant it is now, but we all saw completely different things. The prophecies, they, they shed light on the possible. It is very difficult to navigate through them to find the actual, the real. The visions you saw may have been simply one of a, a million different possible outcomes to whatever you saw, to the future. Mm. By cell you had it or seemed to have in her mind a way to find this truth easily, but also then manipulate it. Make Where did it... you find it? Where did you find this prophecy? It has been a while. In the meantime, Rook and Barclays, <clears throat> what are you guys doing? So I was approaching Barclays. Did you glean anything from the white and gold? Oh yes, they're the magical authorities, I think. They mm -hmm. felt the tremor. They felt magic. And did you tell them that we may have had something to do with this? You know I was tempted. They need to hear our story. We did great things. But I wasn't sure that everyone in our party wants to let everybody know where we are. So I just kept it to myself. That's fair. Right now, and I look around, maybe we shouldn't draw too much attention to our activity in there. And I point towards uh, the Warforged and the man who's weeping. Um, some may see this accident directly our fault. Yes, that's a good point. Um, and I, I guess I'm looking, I'm looking over his shoulder. Are the two in the purple and the blue still around? Yeah, both groups are still um, a little bit away from you now. 
Are they conversing? Or? Nope. They are staying completely separate from each other, but between them, they're, they're talking every now and again. Do I understand anything about what they're dressed in? Like, oh, I kind of check for me. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I guess can you read the bit like gold or the purple? Okay. okay. Seven. Nothing rings a bell. No, you haven't really come across this particular pattern group before. But they are conversing. Between each other, yes. I don't know anything about the purple and blue group of people who I've seen them conversing. So they must be friends with one another. Maybe we should just depart here and head back to the common crush. The wise man. Yes, we should do that. that. <laughs> they did have nice clothes, but they didn't. They didn't just. No, 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 it's good in my mind, but this is a nice clothes. What do you look like? like? It's a bit of a dirty explosion. No, we. I'm trying to play here. And uh, as, 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 as I pointed out, I wipe my hands on the. I don't know what I actually want to say. I'm like. I was like, never mind, friend. friend. You, you are lucky. You need, you need, need a rest. <laughs> you need a rest. So, so hold, hold this. this. I'm going to give him my um, viol and I cast a nade in. How big is the viol? It's hard for you to carry, right? It's, it's a two handed uh, uh, instrument that is basically in between a violin and a cello. And a cello. So, mm. think of half, half that. Half the size of a cello, basically. Can I try and play it? You can make a performance check, go for it. With string? No, that's performance. <laughs> no, definitely performance. It's the nest, man. You're a muscle. Performance? Yep. It's a 12. 12? Yeah. Rook, there was a particular troop of harpling travelers. Mm. That you passed on one of your many journeys between Mornland and Breland. And they were around the campfire, just off the beaten path, and you heard them play similar string instruments. And it piqued your interest one night. And you. <laughs> you went over, and they actually taught you some with their. Brilliant hospitality. You actually did find out that they were of House Galanda, mm. and uh, just bringing supplies to one of the Golden Dragon Inns, one of the many well-known House Galanda inns, and they taught you some play. It's a play. And Barclays, you hear this, and you—it's it, actually not bad. Have you ever thought of the Bard's College, my friend? You know what? You want to answer that? You're doing a good job. And I'll pull out my hand for it. I'll, I'll join you, and let's see in. Okay. And we go now. And we go now. Wow. Okay. We need a manager. That was great. Um, it, <laughs> it's like a group within a group. Um, so you make your way over with Song. What did you roll for your investigation, Thorum? Wow, okay. For the majority, and actually most of the people there were unaware of any sort of earthquake tremor that has ever um, affected the cogs. They are thoroughly surprised, a bit scared at the phen phenomena and are a little bit concerned about what it means. Some of them, some of the uh, Goblins, in common though, are whispering amongst themselves that it's an omen. Some of the half orcs are uh, thinking about even fleeing Shan for what it could mean. Uh, some humans are concerned about the cogs, in fact, just collapse, collapsing around them. Is there any mention of any of us in battle or none of them crawling out of the ruins? Absolutely not. No. Okay. So you go back to Amara and Gunnar and Osei. Osei says to you, Amara, and to you all, 
there's a lake not far from here, Lake Galifar, where the floating twelve towers of Arcanix reside. In that lake, deep underneath, I heard a calling. This piece of parchment was hidden behind magical locks by someone unknown. There was no signature. The magic was quite common, but powerful. And it took me some time to unravel. But with purchasing uh, some magical items, I was able to use them up to unlock this thing. I spent the better part of two days under the water. I met some interesting creatures, some friendly, some not. There are entire kingdoms of fish people, mer people, in that lake. And obviously other creatures of uh, less intelligence. They, the mer people, did feel the same magics stir, but they were too scared, frightened to investigate further. But eventually I found my way there. I must admit I... I became damaged. My kind, I'm not sure if you're aware, but we... we afflicted do not abide well with any sort of uh, liquids. I had to protect myself from that too, but sometimes it did not work, and I was near death a number of times. But I got there, and I retrieved it, because I feel like out of everything, it is of utmost importance that we obtain these, keep them safe. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. I heard you were like asking, but were you able to open the prophecy yourself? I felt as though I could have, but I didn't. Why? <laughs> Jeez. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps it was, perhaps it was my fear, a fear that I did not want to see possible outcomes for our journey, my journey, the journey of millions. I did not want to see a potential disaster again. I'm weaker than I thought, but another part of me thought that it may be best for someone like yourselves who have perhaps more use for it, more powerful than I, to unravel what it, what, what it might mean. Not more powerful, just, just differently, differently able. able. <laughs> <laughs> So nods at that a little bit, solemn. Are we all here? Not quite yet. You just you just haven't made it in yet. Um. I hope you realise I say, would you consider you a part of our team? Well, I mean, I do. She smiles a bit at that. I. Uh, I thank you. I feel like I was away for a, a long time and. I'm sorry for that. I, I did not intend to not communicate with you. I simply didn't have the means. Um, I, I had wanted to know that. And I'm at your disposal if, if you would like any other aid from me. I, my task, I feel, as it is, is, is done. Uh, how many dragon prophecies you have? Three. Three, maybe more, depending on what Arclay's picked up. 
Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. there's so many different things we've heard about. The disease, and then we ran into we ran into a demon at some point and a celestial. Where was this? This is one of my favorites. Here, at the cogs. No, in the in, in the cloud park. park. The Skyway. Skyway. The Skyway. Oh, uh, yeah. and what did this celestial and demon want with you? They weren't looking for us. Well, they're engaged in all that. I see. You know his name now. You know his. You know his name. How how did you come across this? I tricked him. I see. Use it carefully. This creature who you are bound to you. Yes, they will aid you when needed, but when they are not summoned, they will devise some way to be free. Any way that they can. Be wary. Demons are not to be trusted, even though you may know its name. They are sly, evil things, bent on nothing more than destruction of anyone, especially those who have taken command over them. She's visibly at this point. Her, she she's sort of her back to the chair, almost moving backward at the thought. Um, we haven't seen you since Lord of Flakes. What was there anything else that happened? I simply went from there to back to Rote. Spent my time. Uh, rumor mongering, trying to f understand where the, the dragon prophecy was. That was my one, uh, one focus. I could only really travel at night. The sun is not kind to me either. That's why I may have taken a, l a little longer than usual. But that is all. You all look like you'd really need some rest. I can I can keep watch and look out if if you'd like to sleep for a time. Um, of course. Um, at that point, you guys have have come in. Uh, playing <laughs> an interesting tune. Um, you all have never seen Rook pick up an instrument before, but uh, it, it's a decent performance. It's a decent duet. Uh, as they come in, you notice that some of the crowd at the entrance look over and start to have a slow clap in, in the, uh, at the rhythm. And uh, that slowly actually increases to encompass the entire inn. And as you both start to walk in further towards the table where you see your compatriot at, um, at this point, you hear shouts, you hear... Hey, and you and you have that that beat that you're following, and it just seems like a natural theme, a natural progression of faster and faster and faster, and you suddenly just have the entire inn within a matter of moments alight with happiness, and you. What are you doing? Can I say? Uh, put on my um and my my up for Rook and. <laughs> That was your soul, my friend! And then I started. Uh, uh, give him bardic inspiration. Alright. It's yeah, been, uh, it has been a little while since you started, so I'll get another performance check unless you want to do something yeah, first. That's what the bardic's for. Yeah. Probably I want to do a power slide. A power slide? Yeah. Please, uh, please describe yeah. that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look, because of the complete lack of room uh, between the tables, I'll get you to make a, a dexterity check for me first. Sure. 
I'm doing, doing a dexterity. dexterity. A dexterity check, please. Sure. Maybe in your uh, uh, favorite wilderness or something, but no. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Oh, this already is... 17? And now make a performance check for me, please. Uh, and add and add that if you want to. You don't have to no, add I'm it. Adding. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 6. Now it's when you crack and crack and <laughs> <six on Yeah. laughs> <laughs> it's gone electric. I'm doing I'm doing the test. I'm doing the test. I'm doing the test. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Barclays. As everyone is is uh, clapping and cheering, and as you announce that, in one instant, a twirl that you've never really seen anyone else do as perfectly as yourself, um, and as Rook. Uh, slides on both knees he seems to, it seems as though the people uh, directly in front are ready and they move the chairs aside as Rook goes probably a good 10 feet of just sliding and as he does that the magic of his fingers the quickness the the uh, <laughs> the, un <laughs> the undeniable natural uh, the natural skill just fills you with awe and all of you as this this string instrument just gets played faster and faster and more perfect and yes from the balcony I'm gonna grab a handful of silver and throw it towards her and go hey throw me silver <laughs> <laughs> and you watch as as silver and copper and a gold piece here or there just gets tossed towards you you seem to dodge all of it though and it, and it lands around you as you just concentrate on what those halflings taught you years before and you end it. Your arms are burning and you are sweating by the brow but a ruckus roar erupts from the inn and cheering and more coin and you're picking up these, these pieces of, of silver and copper and gold and uh, what are you doing? Um, after that I, I take the hour and... Oh, viol? Viol. Viol. I look at him and I'm sorry, this isn't even mine though. Would you like to... What's that? I'm still looking at him and like... I'm not a vampire, am I? Yeah. Sure. Oh, take that from you. I wouldn't want to wear it out. Well done. Well done. I say he's looking on with a huge grin of glee on her face. But she's looking at Barclays. Um, I'll go with inspiration. I'll just say, I'll just say, I'll just say, like, I can do that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna shoot Barclays a look and say, I thought you were gonna teach me how to play an instrument. Ooh. Look, it's okay. okay. Um, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Tell Amara it's okay. That's the song. <laughs> and then I pull out my flute. Anyway. I'm not a consolation prize. No one's ever turned down my flute before. Yeah. <laughs> 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 my arm visibly laughs as she walks off stairs. Do I hear all this? Yep. I, I tap Bart on the shoulder as I hand back my tough day. You know what? It was worth it. All of it was worth it for what we did and for what you just did. I I am some soul. Shall we have a drink before bed? Yeah, let's do this. Jose, come join us. She's at the table and she and as the crowd uh, divides again and goes back to drinking, uh, talking, but talking now in in higher tones, uh, happier tones, less caring tones. Um, more carefree, I, 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 I made a mistake, but more carefree. And um, she, Say looks at you two and says, join us. Is Orlix in the area? So... Looking around, you saw that he was, as, as you finished playing, he was on top of the bar, just clapping above his head. Hey. He's since gone back to continue to redistribute foods. And um, he did also thank you, Thorum, for that, uh, for that help. Can I 
How much silver do I get out of it? You get 35 silver pieces, 16 gold pieces, and 82 copper pieces. Then you're gonna write that down. Please write that down. Before this you is get like, wait, did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many people are in the room? 40 to 50. I, can I approach the horse if you want to do this? Yeah, sure. He's, he, he takes a moment, he stops what he's doing, and he's serving another platter of food, and he looks at you. Fine performance. And then I said, of course, uh, yeah, apparently it was. Um, but uh, I wouldn't have gotten all this without the support of your talent. And I hand him everything that I made out of that. And say, <laughs> <laughs> and tell him, uh, may this uh, provide food and beverage for those that are in need from the quake. He sort of gives you a, a wide-eyed nod, and and please keep what you need to cover your costs as well. He sort of nods. He takes a, a moment, he's, as though he's, as though he is really thinking about something for a minute and he sort of gestures towards you to go a little bit closer to him. So, um, I wonder, you wouldn't happen to take fancy of men, would you? <laughs> I, I can share my room this evening if, if you are so inclined. I like wince, but not in pain. Like, <laughs> did I hear that right? Uh, always, I understand. Um, I get it. I get why you're in. And I, I say to him, and I, I kind of like look him to to make proper eye contact. Um, I wish there to be no animosity between us when I say this, but uh, I am aware of your past, and it does sadden me that you lost a loved one. Um, I am humbled by your your offer, but um, I say do no, not say no more. Say it's it's, <laughs> it's it's okay. I. I, I simply feel honoured uh, that you are so kind to me, and, and our friendship is, means quite a lot. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not. No, no, you, 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 yeah, 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 you are. You are. And so, in, in what, what I must understand of your life, life, I know what you want, and don't be ashamed of it. I'm never ashamed of it. But with, with your opportunity, I think you may have a great deal of And I hope you find your hey, hey, loved one again. I'm sure I will on my travels. And he gives you a bit of a nod of acknowledgement and moves away from you and back into the crowd. And you, you see that he has a slight smile on his face. The, the conversation seemed to have gone in a positive way. Time for some nails. my hands. Oh, oh, yes, yes, that's, 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 um, that's, that's easy to <laughs> <laughs> And then head back over to Gunnar. Who are you sort of saying? So Gunnar, I say? Mm hmm. I put that down, and head back to the bar again, to give myself a juice. One is, one is made quickly by one of the bartenders, not Orlix, but uh, this time it is a, a simple citrus juice, orange, lemon, tangerine juice. Uh, you can put a parasol in there, yes. Alright. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you. This is this. Come on, we should relax a little bit. Take it easy. This is true. We we completed an accomplishment here that was not in our favour. 
And, and again, again, I must admit, admit I, don't I don't know if I have the opportunity to tell you, but um, your, your spellcasting spell capabilities may have saved us more than once in that encounter. But it helped, I think, think that um, Barclays, um, we can be very related. Um, thank you for bringing me along for the ride as well, although it didn't go how we planned it. Well, well, we're, we're all here. here. Mm -hmm. I think we all did really well. We really, um, yeah, yeah so we've, we've definitely become inspired. Are we, are we, are we, are we, are we like, attached to anything? Or, like, is, is, is we, like, lost <laughs> full for him? Maybe we could change it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, there was... It's a place hole, place Um, Thor and Amara went up there. Uh, uh, speaking, speaking of, I would like to talk to Paul and stuff like that. Sure. Um, yeah. um, so, so, like, going, going upstairs, I think he went, went up before me. me. Yeah. So, so I was, like, like caught up to Laura. And, and I was said, um, hey, hey this, this is, um, this is, this is a little, little bit weird for me to say, say because I feel, I feel like, for some, some reason, we have, have a weird relationship. relationship. Like, like, one, one day we're friends. friends. And then, and then another, another day, you're accusing me of attacking you. Um, and I'm accusing you of attacking me. And, and I'm, I'm saving, saving your life, life and, and then you're saving my life. life. So, that is the nature of the dragon born friendship. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I, guess I guess what I'm trying, trying to say is. <laughs> look at the history check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, guess I guess what I'm <laughs> trying to say is. Thank you for healing me, because if you hadn't, I probably would be alive. I know that I've wasted that time on you before I wasted it on that trace of books. Wasted it. Thank you for saving my life. Um, thank you for saving my life. Um, thank Sense that this might, might not be as easy to go. I don't know why. I gave it to Barclays. That was a stupid decision. We should wait until the morning. Nice. Drinking my beer ice or something like that. We should wait then until the morning until we're all rested and open it together. Do we rest or should we? I assume we can see that they're all kind of fucked up. It's a revelry. It is also just after dawn, just be aware of the time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to meditate for a bit. I, I, I think, think after, after something, something like that, that I need to, to speak to the world. <laughs> um, but, but I will join you guys down there shortly. Um, just in case they ask where I am. I will get them out of the body and tell Gunner that if he wishes to join your meditation, he can join you. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, if you want to change us, you can. No, no, great, Ava. Save too many times. You should become a monk, Ava. Thank you. I'll consider it. I'm definitely fine. It's good times. It's pretty relaxing. You can pretty much do whatever you want. That's the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, and then I leave. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go into a room. Just gonna find a quiet corner, corner. The quietest corner. And, and just. Even if it's loud, I won't hear too much. Just gonna, gonna try and sit down for like 20 minutes. Connect with the body. And then I'll head back downstairs. Okay. Yes. When I get downstairs, I'll be gonna know that Amara is doing her daily meditation. Um, my um, friend Jude, Jude for, um, no, no that's, that's okay. okay. 
I'll introduce <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can get your own juice. Um, the the options were tropical, citrus, or uh, or plain apple. What would you prefer? Yep. Yep. A little concoction. Okay. You, you you even find some pomegranate, and you you squeeze a bit of that in there as well, which uh, just makes it a bit tart, but uh, still quite fruity and juicy. Mm -hmm. yep. Th those particular ingredients take you a little bit longer to find, but you make a, a fairly good brew. You don't find any white spirits. No. Lol. You have some bowls of fresh, fresh apparently, in the bag of holding. You do? It's um, hotshot spirits that we took from the Oaks. Is it called fresh? Or is it just a bit frightening? I don't know, mate. What the Did you write it down? No, yeah, yeah. We've talked about that many times. We have. That's what you have. But have you written it down? Yes, yes, I have. Somewhere so, in while there. while you look for like it, um, you put this unnamed alcohol. I'm gonna call it a dragon breath tropical. And with that, years go by, and all that uh, bartenders in the taverns in all the land of Corvair will see. <laughs> <laughs> That this was Thorum's, uh, Thorum's uh, I guess, mixture. Um, and it tastes not great, but it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> alright. I would say, who is with us, say, still? I'm next to her with the beer. Yep. Um, the ale. Gunnar, you're still next to I say, aren't you? Um, and, and wherever, wherever I was, was at the table. table. Yeah, yeah. So, I see yeah. yeah, so you um you got that message from Thorum, but I say speaks and she says Well Amara's gone to rest, I'm sure you all need and would like some as well, but uh before you go, uh, if you are if I'm going to look out for you now that the immediate danger has passed, I've been through Sharon. And if you have any other um uh, tasks that you have to do, do them. But while you're here, if you wanted to be a bit carefree for a time, just explore it. See see what opportunities there are. You may find you may find that you will, will uh, find something to learn. A new skill perhaps or something to do. Uh, you might find people in the crowds that are uh, people you haven't seen in some time or perfor uh, see performers uh, do fantastic things. It is indeed a city of magic when you're not uh, needing to just come in and do what you need to and go. Uh, so I know that the crowds and the populace of Shan will not appreciate you for what you've done, but the few who know, appreciate it immensely, and will know. Have you not seen the sky joust yet? Oh, it is a spectacular sight. <laughs> oh, by the way, 14 bottles of fresh. You've written down, in, in brackets, brackets next to it, 100 GPs. Each. Yeah. Well done. Was one of them given to the child? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I gave my little run. Oh, that. Correct. Yeah. I just pulled like 4 GP worth of fresh strangers. Strangers drink. Cool. Yeah, that never way to fit it. It is a strong, <laughs> strong drink. 
And with the battle that you've just come out of, you feel even more uh, dulled of your senses. Can you light the alcohol? Can you light the alcohol yourself? <laughs> that would be a cool effect. Can you do that? I could potentially do that, but I should probably practice in the open space. Let's see. All right. When the crowd dissipates, we'll see. I can never light up like a whole barrel. Imagine if you're doing like flaring and singing in the bar, it's like lighting up an entire line of cocktails. <laughs> 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 All the ideas. <laughs> 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 so, Jose, how do you like to let your hair down? <laughs> Um, she says, she looks at you and these, these red eyes greet yours and she says, I, I have contacts here that help me upskill and keep sharp uh, in certain ways. Uh, I feel like they are not the most reputable of groups. So I, unless you are particularly interested, um, I'd probably keep that information to myself. I think. So you're all business. That's okay. okay. Apart from sleep, which I need rarely do. Yeah, I, I have a question. Um, do we know where Jose comes from? So, so I'm going to leave you with that and go, so you're all business. business. How, How is your organization going? going? Uh, not my organization, one that I uh, frequent when I need to upskill, uh, have better, have more dexterous hands, mm -hmm. uh, perform escape, uh, perf uh, they have a particular, you would call it a, as an escape room of sorts that you need to have particular de dexterous skills to uh, go out unscathed. I practice in those. So you're a freelancer than outsources? I take care of myself, or did, before I met you all. Can I interject? Um, I, I assume, assume I'm sitting on a chair, got, got my legs, legs crossed, crossed, and my feet on another chair. chair. Mm -hmm. It's kind, kind of observing. And I turn to... to um, <laughs> what, what, that's I'm not sure what that's looking like right now. Sit on my feet up on the chair. Oh, okay, right. And, um... I've got my hair on, I say to, I say, oh, you seem to be in luck, I bet Barclays is um, quite dexterous with his hands, maybe I'll have to provide some support. Uh, yes. Yeah. She like looks this. at you, Rook, and says, I'm well aware of what the famed Barclays the Viper can do with his hands by rumour <laughs> and, <laughs> and legend. Come on, I'll trust the chapel. However, the mm -hmm. skills I uh, tweak are not of that nature. Unfortunately, Unfortunately you are this. <laughs> There's, There's always time. time. There's, There's always, always the morning and the night. We'll, we'll see. see. Um, yes, yes, but one last, last question, question though. So, so your work for a particular house, organization, organization you work for yourself, what is motivating you? I didn't always seek them from I didn't always seek them mm. one found me I guess you'd, you'd say soon after I and in, in much lower tones so you can barely hear it she starts speaking again after I was turned Oh, right. I used to be, I used to, in fact, uh, be a member of a fleet of ships, a sailor in the Lazar Principalities. Ah, uh, traveler, sailor. Not a, not a traveler, more of a, more of a, uh, a pirate, 
if you would call it that. Non opportunist, I see. That's, mm. That's a better word, yes. My, my ears immediately tweet at this, and uh, that's uh, somewhere near Moral Hall. You know your land well. Yes, it's the enormous land mass or set of land masses to the north of Moral Hall that everyone knows, yes. You must tell me of his time traveling along these waterways. Ah, uh, well. It was a, it was an interesting time. I was born on a ship, and therefore I found my sea legs quite quickly. Uh, it was at Ilmaro Castle that my journey as a pirate ended, and my life as this, of what you see, began. I only show this face to people I trust, and I trust you. Everyone else in this room sees a human. Can I make a... Or maybe I need to make an insight check too. She seems ashamed of being. Yeah, insight check. Sure. <coughs> um, seven. Seven? Yeah. Um, you don't really get a reading from this this face, although you're not overly surprised. She's fairly emotionless looking for the most part, unless there are a particularly uh like your performance, anything that's grandioso uh, or, or extremely emotional that, that you would get any reading from her, mm. you just can't make out what what she's feeling. She just seems to speak in more of a, a matter-of-factly type of way. Yeah. And she continues, she says, uh, Yes, um, I was turned at El Maro Castle in uh, the Fingerbone Mountains, quite north of the Lazar Principalities, where we ran aground during a storm and the ship that I was on, all of its sailors were used as food. I managed to escape for a time from their clutches, but I was captured. But instead of being fodder like the rest, they saw some potential in me and I became one of them. I then was tasked to turn others, disguise myself. So I was their, I was their slave, a soldier, their particular motives I'm not aware, but I managed to do them proud, I guess, in my beginnings as a Creature and the undeath. I like it not, no. From the very moment I was transformed, I felt sick. I felt not myself, uneasy, wanting to change the moment I got the bite. But I must, I'm, I, I needed to do what I needed to do to survive. And so ship after ship, was turned and used as fodder as well. I then escaped, eventually, under their watchful gaze. So you would find me a runaway, a stowaway. One that is eluding them. I'm not sure if they're chasing after me, but I want to remain hidden. And therefore I practice. Practice my uh, escape artistry and hiding in shadows. Solitary life is the life for me. Like a pirate. Oh, no. Uh, I put down my ear and I'm like, hmm. So, perhaps maybe the prophecy might be able to um, help remedy this situation for you then. Hmm. I've seen nothing in them yet for myself that gives me a good or an ill outcome they seem to only focus on you all but i am fine with that perhaps when you all of your tasks and deeds are done and you save the land perhaps my time will come to be free of their bindings of their looking over my shoulder thankfully i haven't met one yet i haven't run across any of my kind which I'm grateful for, because if they did 
come in force, then I feel like I would very quickly become entangled. And perhaps this time, my final breath would be made. You say entangled, and what now? I'd be bound to them again. They'd ship me back to Ilmara Castle, perhaps forever. Um, I hold up my, my drink in her direction and say, there's no reason for you to be entangled with these lots if you're with us. She gives a slow nod. I appreciate it. Um, I feel more, I feel safer around you all. But I don't want the danger to come to you as well. You are knee deep in your own mess. Or you were. I don't know what personal things you have between you to to overcome, but I don't want an, and something else to complicate matters. I, I, I would hmm. I kind of feel, feel there's, there's a feeling, feeling that, that we can, can uh, relate, relate to in our group. Sit down with me and I look back on And that's what I do. You said something about being in the shadow. Amara, Amara my dad, helped that. She's good with shadow. She's, um, um, she can turn your interest into the rhythm, I think. Or, or, or walk through, through them or something. something. Maybe she should teach you. That's uh, as much as I appreciate it, Gunnar. Uh, I have my own way of hiding magically as well. Um, I will talk to her about it, however, to see if I can learn anything new. Uh, so thank you. Yeah. Well, well, then, what about, what about the card game? game? I hear, um, you're, You're quite nimble with your fingers, fingers and as a game of the only time to introduce. Shall we land the moon? Before we get to the deck. You're keeping me before you go to bed. Four times. Oh, I'm Okay. As you all set out a deck of cards and start to play. Uh, your your game, Gunnar, are you joining them? Um, I'm, I'm just going to rest, so it's okay. okay. I'm going to try and get a short rest while we're doing Sure. And Amara, you are meditating. And uh, Thorum, what are you doing at this time? I'm Yep, okay. So, Osei decides not to join in. She simply watches on. Her, arm, her arms folded. And you can see while you're playing that she's not simply resting. You can see her eyes glancing, always watchful, making sure that you all have some sort of uh, reprieve from anything that might look untoward in the room. And with that, we're going to take a 10 minute break, guys. It is 8.30, approximately halfway through. A um, bit of RP in there, I like that. Um, everybody who is uh, on and watching, we're going to take 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a, a bit of a breather, stretch our legs. Uh, please do the same. Uh, and we will come back in, let me see, be about 8.30. Oh, no, 8, 8.40. It'll be 8.40 on the dot. We'll come back. Um, lovely. And we'll see you soon. Hopefully you can uh, join us later. Bye.
Yeah, yeah risk it. You gotta risk it to get the biscuit. Like uh, hello everybody, we are back. Um, oh, I gotta play some music. We're just waiting on Rook to come back to us, and then we will go continue with our little respite that Thorum's Five is having after the battle last session. If you haven't seen last session, uh, won't spoil anything, but um, give it a look. And it's on. Uh, it's, is it on the YouTube's yet, Thorum, or is it on Twitch at the moment? Last session. So yeah. the last session is on Twitch, mm. and two previous sessions before that are on YouTube.com forward slash Bates Group. Noise. Hot. I thought you were being so hot when you were saying YouTube.com. Can I just that say so that voice no. that you just pulled out of nowhere? I saw that back on that. Like I was like, I'm just gonna, <laughs> and I just watched everyone at the table go. <laughs> it was a beautiful voice. I thank you. Thanks very much. I might, uh, I might use it once or twice again, way down the track. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? You might find that person again. That's right. Yeah. Might grow up and try and kill you all. Oh jeez. <laughs> what? We, we just we just saved him. <laughs> oh, you talking about the kid? I thought you were talking about the army voice. I was like, yeah, that was that voice. Oh, the war forge. Yeah. You enjoyed that too? <laughs> that was, oh no, wait, that, that was, was mine. Was talking, we're talking about. Oh, thank you. Talking about the kid that sounded like um. Hey, um, <laughs> when you put up your um, on steroids. <laughs> uh, no, he I don't didn't, think he that's right. I mean, I've never taken steroids. Thorum. I don't know. Thorum. 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 What's up? Um, how did you put the link of your character sheet in the chat? I copied the URL from the top. And then That's a good idea. <laughs> oh, so you buy username nice. and password. Done. Yes, absolutely. And you well, you have to make your character public. Uh, so if it's not public, you won't be able to view it. I actually posted my character sheet so that people, if they don't have a D&D Beyond account or anything like that, they can just view it anyway. You can go to their printer. And print it out. True. That's um, awesome if you do that. In fact, Preston's just going to read his stats out loud for you. Well, I actually was a little bit anxious because like it has literally everything, everything. you can yeah. see. And I'm like, Correct. someone's going to see something and be like, that's wrong. And I'll be like, eh. Just quickly, <laughs> yeah. um, we gave a shout out to Meeples and Dragons at the start. Sarah is back in the chat. so Thank you so much, Sarah. Sarah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, Look, we, we are late uh, from our break. Uh, apologies. Um, <laughs> Failing but, a soul round. <laughs> yeah, look, you will fail your next roll automatically, whatever that is. So, uh, <laughs> <There's no laughs> you make it with double disadvantage. New rule. Double disadvantage. <laughs> roll it four times. Take the lowest. <laughs> so, uh, that oh, wait, I think, hold on, wait. Guys. I, think, uh, I think John is also in the chat because Meeples and Dragons just posted boo. No. <laughs> so why, why is Sarah and John both in the chat? Cool! Sup, <laughs> John! John! Don't Thank you. Lol. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we'll talk about this on Friday. Yeah, Friday. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, is everyone all good? I'm comfortable. Comfortable, ready to go? Yeah. Love it. Um, yeah. Feeling good. Okay. I'm so, meditating. I'm comfy as You well. are meditating. I'm interrogating. Well, you're playing cards. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Have you have you completed the card game? Well, for the purposes oh, yeah. of this, so. yeah, would so you did. would you like the short or the long version? Well, that's Rook, short. Rook is down fifty gold now. <laughs> that's the short version. <laughs> short or long, guy? Short. Let's do short. Okay. Short. Can you? I get each of you to roll a d twenty twice, and uh, between rolls, tell me what your outcome is. Can I also Just use any roll. of my gambling uh, yes, skills so, to yes. assist in this scenario? If, yes, you can. You, so you can use deception, de deception if you'd like. Um, and then add the two rolls together for me. Can so I, Do I get to add my proficiency if my tools are a dice now? Yes, you can. And what are we betting, by the way, guys? I think it was a well, but, but before the rolls yeah. are, are cast and yeah. said, yeah. bet what you'd like. Alright. I'm 20? Yeah, why not 20? 20? 20 gold? Yeah. I'll do 20 gold. So, basically the pool is 20 each. Uh -huh. So you're rolling a d20, just a straight d20, uh -huh. and then you're rolling a deception check on top of that. Uh -huh. And Rook only is adding your proficiency skill to the to the final roll, to the in number entirely. Okay. Highest wins. So, 
When you have come up with that number, let me know. So it was one roll. It was one d twenty, then uh, just a straight roll, and then another one yeah. of deception. Yeah. Adding both together. Mm-hmm. Adding both together. And another one. And I'm adding my deception. You're adding, so you did this, yeah, your deception check. Correct. Uh, oh, 16. Okay, 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 cool. Yes. Okay. Yes, it was really bad. Wow. Yeah, so Thorum folds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a moment. Barclays, what did you roll in total? Well, I think it, it's 26. 26 in total, okay. <laughs> Ooh. And with that, Barclays, you tip Rook uh, by, by a, a, a particular uniformed method of the cards, deceiving him enough to gather the other 40 gold. So you are up 40 gold and you take your 20 back. He, he only put silver on the table, so fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to play another round? And do the same thing. Bet you can bet another another amount if you'd like. Double or nothing. Done. Forty. Forty. Okay, Rook, are you in this? Yeah, one. All right. Do you have forty gold? No, oh, yeah. you just won it. <laughs> so you all put forty into the pool. Mm-hmm. Again, rolling two d twenties. One of them is just a straight roll. The other roll is a deception check. So you add, we roll, mm-hmm. you roll the d20 and add your deception modifier. Oh. So you roll two d20s. Roll two d20s. Oh, oh okay. You, you collided them together. That's an 18. God. Okay, a little, a little bit better. Thorum, you're looking down at your cards and you are... Just unsure as to who actually dealt this to this, this morning. <laughs> so, do you just have a good dog? Oh, yes. Sorry. Sorry, Rob, that is good. What did you roll, Barclays? I can listen to what. Okay, Rob, you go. You rolled 20 in total. 37. And once again. Barclays, you look down at your cards and you feel confident and you uh, raise enough so that the others fold. You take that coin and you add it to your card. Similar to how Barclays was drinking before and he felt like something was wrong. Amara raised out of her meditation and goes, something was right. Barclays just won money. Barclays meditation. Well, that 20 minutes has passed by that stage. Uh, it was a religion check. Seventeen. Do you want to keep the information to yourself, or would you, are you going to be sharing that? I'm happy to share that for the audience's sake. I asked the question: How do you feel vampirism? Because I don't think that you can feel vampirism without feeling vampirism. Okay. Big big deal. So, your knowledge of the affliction is such that a powerful spell can cure vampirism or destroying the creature affected and then reviving them. However, the, re- the reviving spell needs to be one quite a bit more powerful than your usual revivify. It needs to be that in which you, you have knowledge of Thurum, but only superiors to you in Edo know such uh, power. And that is a spell called Resurrection. Resurrection is, is far more powerful, more absolute, and far more divine in need than something like what you are currently able to perform. So... Yes, it can be cured, but only by quite powerful folk. Right. 
Like yourself. Um, the only other way, sorry, I said two ways. The only other way is that which you know already, a wish spell. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to make my way downstairs to the rest of the group. Okay. Just approach and That's you walking downstairs. <laughs> Performance check, no. <laughs> no. Um, and when I get to downstairs, I go, do the Barclays win money? Yes. Yeah. 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 Ye
No, actually, it's too good for you, Raphael. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, Raphael, do you still have the property? I have But I feel we should go somewhere private. And you can take the property from me. Are you seducing me, Raphael? In front of me is about four tankets already. And plus, like, I don't know, maybe some, like, spilled over, like, shot glasses and stuff like that. It's like... No, yes, no. <laughs> can I, I inside check that? Sure. Hell yeah. I've been waiting for this moment in my whole life. I don't know. No, um, I is don't that... Know. Uh, thirteen. Thirteen? Are you trying to... Deceive. Deceive? Look, you have had a few... Quite a lot, I would say, at disadvantage. Yep. Go for it. As in my phone, I know I don't know, so I yep. disadvantage. <laughs> that was so good. That was not so good. But that's still... Uh, it doesn't make me, That's still a 12. I've rolled a thirteen. Oh! So what, what was your intention, Barclay? You know, it's a fleeting moment of going backwards and forwards about going to my room and, you know, things. Um, so, so, Amara... But then, then I'm like, then I'm like, oh, it's my companions. Yeah. You um, don't need to play them with work. For, for a moment, Amara, you did get the sense mm. from the tone of voice that Barclays... I got validation just for a moment. Yeah. No. I don't need no man's validation. Fuck that guy. Um... <laughs> I just look at Barclays and I go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you actually say that. No, I look at Barclays and I say, "You gotta remember the moment that I outwitted you forever." I'm like looking into her eyes and like, so I. I'm alright. Let me hear a story. I think I can play uh, Barclays's instrument. I, I saw. No. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get my silver, I can waste that. Yes, Gunnar. Um, as you were all just like talking about sort of smacks, um, you're just gonna hear Gunnar say, Hey, we're gonna sell. Can you come to the Cargan Fresh in the cars? It's Gunnar, thanks. And that's cost Okay. Cool. Can you reply to that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, a moment passes and uh, you soon hear the dulcet tones of his voice back in your head. Oh yeah, I I certainly can if you want. Um, how long before you need me here? I can't <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna come soon. <laughs> Um, while this is happening, I would like to look at Barclays and say, so, prophecy? <sighs> Flute. Horn. Oh, my God. Prophecy. I would say... <laughs> um, I'm gonna look at her and say she's still there, right? Yeah, she's keeping an eye out and uh, just half observing the room, half listening to your conversation. I'm gonna say in her mind, this is too many jovial men around. Um, jovial, yeah. <laughs> this is why I'm speaking in her mind. Um, and I'm gonna say, should we check out this prophecy? And she can, she can reply. In your mind, she replies. That and other useful bits of information that you can find from Bicelius' person, yes. Whatever you can to move forward. Almost a question. Um, I'll say back to her. I think only some of us are capable of doing that right now. As she said, well, no, I don't hear you say that. I yeah. just look at her and I'm like, hmm, she's doing a thing. But I can't tell what what's going on. What are you looking at? 
Oh, because I'm kind of standing up, so then I'm, I'm looking down. My favorite companions. Good day. And I walk on up the stairs, and I'm gonna go retire. <laughs> By the way, you forgot your pipe flute. <laughs> Throw them last in the way. Oh, I, I look back and like. I think it's a pan flute. <laughs> you look after my pan pipe, <laughs> friend. I know you'll play it well. I'll see you soon. Oh man, he does have a problem. <laughs> I'm gonna look over at Ballroom and um, Gunnar and be like, Are they into each other? Yes, I mean, yes, they are. Okay. What do you mean? Hmm. Touch my flutes. Wait, they both have flutes? Mm hmm. And they can both play them. <laughs> Quarters. Okay. Cool. Um, Osei, did you want to share the room with him? She sort of shakes her head slowly and says, I will keep watch as I promised while you are all uh, taking rest. If there's any dangers, I will let you know immediately. But I will be outside. About you being by yourself? I no longer have the prophecy on me, so I, I don't personally feel like, and since Bicelio is no longer with us, I feel a bit less threatened, immediate threat. But I thank you. If there's anything that I find within the time frame that you need to rest, you will be warned. Don't run away again. I am here. As I'm stumbling to my room, um, are there any like um, um, altars or anything like that? Like shelves, bookshelves, that type of thing on the way? Uh, yeah, Barclays, you're going to have to make a perception check at disadvantage, please. You you are quite dizzy at this point in time. It's a mad one already. Okay, um, you do not find any. In fact, you stumble past tables and you f you actually do trip over the leg of a chair on your way to... just Because you are just not focused. You're focusing on if there's something, some sort of shelf around you. You do a 180 and you just slam your head on the ground... Um, and just you get a little bit of whiplash that your neck just cracks slightly um, and you look up and you're seeing birds around your around your vision and this whiteness um, this humanoid figure looks over you you can't re really make them out and they say are you all right yes the chairs are aggressive here here yeah. And he, uh, uh, he, you feel yourself get up and, and, and this, this large arm sort of help you up there and you look a little bit closer. You see this, this quite stocky looking human figure, older, uh, clean shaven, but just wrinkles around the eyes and around the, uh, around the jawline, a big scar across that bone of the jaw. All right, uh, you take care of yourself. Thank you, my well-weathered friend. <laughs> I've been in some storms. You look good. good. As do you, but a little bit under the weather. Yes. Which way is my room? So are we seeing this? Yeah. I'm going to go over and I'm going to be like, I'm not seducing you. And I'm going to help him up the stairs. Okay. Uh, just make a strength check for me. Uh, he's he's a little bit dead weight at the moment. He's stumbling. Which dice do I use? I've already banged the good ones. ones. The big one. The big boy. It's bad. It's not good. It is a two. <laughs> you are about halfway up the stairs, and you are you're flying around a little bit. You're still a little bit off uh, off your feet from the. the time I'm like, <laughs> uh, off your feet a bit from the from the fall. Amara, you slip 
from the uh, from the one of the stairs that actually gives way and cracks underneath you. Barclays, you feel yourself being let go, and you fall down. And you hold on, Amara, because you are dexterous. I try, I'm like, um, but ah! you, no, you, you miss him. Barclays, you go once again on your back, but down a half a flight of stairs. This time, you are going to take uh, nine points of bludgeoning damage as you hit your head on the railing, and then ricocheting off that, your back cracks along the back of a chair. I um, I ask uh, Barclays. Oh my God, say. These stairs, they haven't heard of me. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, John from Beatles and Dragons just commented saying, Barclays, greatest enemy, stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Barclays, have you come back for your pan flute? <sighs> yes. I feel there are enemies abound. <laughs> come here, my friend. Come and go, they're, they're cowards. Let me escort you. Is me also drunk? Who's drunk? Um, Barclays is. Rook, would you say you have, uh, over the courses of the card games, had a bit to drink as well? Not as much as he's described. In which case, yeah, in which case, just make a constitution uh, check for me, please. Uh, Saving throw, saving throw. Can I take that? Can I take that? Not that one. (laughs) The fourth one tonight. While he's doing what he's doing. I pull out one blade, and I pull out another blade, because I'm kind of like on the ground, and then like I fall flat on my face, and I just start fucking like climbing <laughs> up a wall. But really, I'm dragging myself along the floor <laughs> to try and get I'm gonna help him that way. Yeah, okay. Um, Ro- Stop ruining Wallace's pub. You are, you're feeling a bit dizzy yourself, mm-hmm. um, but what were you wanting to do? I actually wanted to go over and assist him and take him to, All right. to, to bed. Um, so we'll help together? Yeah, help together, but make Ooh. separate rolls of strength check, but you will do it at a disadvantage, please. Um, on my way over to help um, Barclays, I say, Oh, Alex, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> if you actually say that, I don't know if he's going to take that very well. <laughs> I did that. Um, Wait, do I get advantage? <laughs> oh, no. An eight. An eight? I rolled two twelves. Two twelves? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you got to add your strength. Oh, uh, two fourteen. Two fourteen. Okay, that's enough. Um, with the help of Amara and Rook this time, Barclays, they sheathe your weapons <coughs> a- away. Uh, what's that? <laughs> no, no, that's all right. That's all right. I, 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 I thought you would have been a bit more uh, tactful. Um, and Barclays, you managed to get up the, those set of stairs. And as you climb up and get to that last rung, you look back down and you feel like you've really won this day. My friends, we've triumphed. We've triumphed we did. as a group and we've beaten these stairs as a group. Now let us retire. Have you seen a shelf? A shelf? Yes. Why are you looking for a shelf? Because. Why? Can you see one? Can we see a shelf? Yeah, there are shelves around on the, on the very outside. There's probably two shelves, um, open shelves. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're no doors. I see two. Great. Take me to my room, and on the way, I want to visit one of the shelves. Are they're downstairs. Know? They're back downstairs. Oh, the shelves are downstairs. Well, what? you don't know that, but oh, yes. I see them. No. Yeah. Okay. You, you see. All right. Them. Fine. Unless I, he's in here. Are you trying to put down prickly Pete? Yeah. I'll do it for you. <laughs> there are railings on the balconies. That's where you are at the moment. Mm-hmm. But the shelves are downstairs. They have their own plants, um, flowers, uh, decorations, mm-hmm. okay. s- small statues on them. But there's yeah. room. Okay, good. Would you like me to take Prickly Pete for you? <clears throat> He's our friend and he will watch over us. Okay, thank and you. And we will sleep well. You will sleep well in one room. I will sleep well in another. Um, just like last night, I wedged the chair under the door handle. Okay. Uh, mostly so these guys can't get in. Do another, do another intelligence check, please, as you attempt to bar that doorknob from being opened from the outside. A bit like locking a door without a key. Before we leave, quickly, Pete. Oh. 
If you like, if, well, you, you test the doorknob and it, you can't open it with that, one, particularly because you've just put that chair underneath. So you feel like you've done a good job. Cool. Gunnar, what are you doing? Um, I'm just waiting downstairs. With Ose? Yeah. Okay. Oh, for anything in particular? Um, to see if maybe uh, have a long time. Okay, sure. I just, I just say, say a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Not realizing how pretty it is in my good day. And I walk off to my room. I'm gonna watch to make sure Barclays gets this safely. Take another four points of piercing damage for me, Barclays, as you, <laughs> you put, you put your hands on it first, and you are just skewered halfway through the finger by a particularly large. Not only by the vibe, but by the stairs and the cactus. Is this true? I um, pull out my water skin and just eat. Give me some delicious. <laughs> I thought you were going to pull out your um, <laughs> pot and your... Um, I don't know, I'm going to use that. I'm going to pick up Prickly Key. I'm going to begrudgingly walk downstairs. I'm not, not really going to try stealth. I'm just going to walk up to the window and go... Alright. Put him in there. Yeah. And then I'm going to go... See he's good. And then I'm going to go out to my own room. Did you say goodbye? Alrighty. Cool. <laughs> Did you not say goodbye? <laughs> Sounds good. So, you three have gone to bed. Thorum, have you gone to bed? Gunnar. Yeah. About an hour passes. Within that hour, um, are you wanting to... How, how long did you want to wait before you did anything else? I say is silent in that time. Um, she doesn't seem to not, not not want to converse. Simply, just focusing all her energy of making sure that you're all safe. Um, I will. <coughs> I'll wait for Dad in like 45 minutes an hour, and if he doesn't, doesn't show up, up, I'll go talk to the boys. Okay. Um, an hour passes, and looking at that door expectantly, um, you see patrons go in and out for the day of work. You see people finishing their meals. The place gets a bit quieter. It, it, it reduces number pretty significantly over the course of that hour from about that 40 to 10, if that. You and, uh, you and Osei included. And you... Um, Did any of the um, refugees come in? Refugees from the so Tremors? Yeah. Uh, there were... As, as you went forth, you probably only counted about up, uh, just less than 20 of them that really were affected in that immediate area and you didn't see all of them come in so after that hour you probably would remember about half of them come in and then go again so for the most part you think you've, you've sort of tagged everyone who might have taken advantage of all access hospitality and the hospitality of Haskellander but that now, the hour passes and just on the hour um, over that, sorry, over that time, all has come back and forth and seen if you guys were okay with food and drink, um, and you've had your fill. Uh, he even um, might have snuck some raw meat at you, um, giving you a bit of a wink. Um, actually, I will ask him. Uh, what was, do you have any kind of um, courier services or something like that that I can make a place and order food? I can get something to house service for you. House service is the uh, the masters of courier services here. Um, could you get some bug? Like insects? Live ones? Give us a favor. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Um, um, well, obviously we don't have any here. Um, so you're asking me to ask the couriers to um, retrieve live bugs? Yes, please. Okay, uh, any... I can give you money. Be beetles in particular. Mm. Anything else? Um, he'd like, like some crunchy, I think. Anything crunchy? Yeah. I will see what I can do. Um, I, how about this? I, uh, I will get them, and then I will let you know how much they were. Okay. I, because I'm, I have no idea how much they're going to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. Um, when, when you're needing to buy, the house service uh, charges more for express services. Make it as quick as possible, please. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, um, 
from right away. And he scurries back and he, you, you see him do something underneath the bar, um, sort of uh, with his hands, he sort of goes in and there's a little box that he opens, closes, writes something down on, uh, and then he sort of looks over the bar at you from a distance, gives you a bit of a wink and a nod, and continues his uh, hospitality. During that time, just over an hour passes, but before you re-talk to Orlex, you do see the door opening and a familiar blue-skinned, tall, uh, Regav Cell, Furbolg, uh, stride in, this time wearing a very silky white robe with, uh, with red stars at the bottom, uh, sort of threaded in. Um, no, no hood or anything. He's he's uh, he's bareheaded. Although he is wearing a, no, he's not bareheaded. He's no hood, but he's wearing a um, like a, like a three three sided hat with a with a lovely plume of blue feather coming out of it. He's looking quite regal. Um, when when Gunnar sees him walk in the door, he's gonna sit up like that, eyes wide, and then quickly he will use his hat and he will. Emulate exactly what he's wearing, so he's going to mirror a smaller version of that. Okay. Um, he's leaning over to say, "Have you met Regav Cell before?" Say looks over, uh, sort of distracted for a moment. Uh, I can't say I have. I've met some of his kind before. Is we friend? saved him like we saved you. Lots of time. Oh. Uh, I'm sure he is in your debt, as am I. No, just a friend. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, are we... Are we partaking in conversation? He's coming over here, I think. And as you watch, <laughs> he, he... Sort of, you, you see him... You, uh, he sees you wave, and... And he sort of uh, moves over uh, slowly. And as he moves over, you, no one else seems to take notice of, of a Furbolg, even though they're not the, not the most common race in Shan. He, he sort of takes a chair, wordlessly sits down and puts one large blue arm that has these, a similar white glove with stars on it, which I'll assume that you'll emulate as well. <laughs> oh, I see we have a uh, similar taste. It is good to see you, Gunner. Yeah, we must have the same tailor. <laughs> Who do you go to? Oh, uh, someone in, um, in a different city. You probably don't know them. Oh, well, I get mine here in Sharn, how coincidental. Yeah. Anyway, who's your friend? Is she do? Is she all right? She's a little bit pale. <laughs> I'm sitting down, I'm just tall. Oh, yeah. Her name is Osei. This is Osei, my lady. He's all right. He's okay. You can trust him. Osei just darts her eyes back and forth really quickly. This is Jose. We, were, we rescued her in the, the cave. No way! Yeah, it is Jose. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, way. Jose. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. It, it, is, it is nice to <gasps> we meet did it. you. Why? I said he was dead. I saw you. I saw you. Oh. Yeah. I, and. I am so sorry. Did your friends perish? <laughs> I, I, my, my condolences. If there's anything I can do to help, I, uh, my shop. No, it's okay. Oh. I mean, they're okay. They're oh, okay. oh, thank goodness. I. They're sleeping. They're a bit tired. I'm a bit tired too, but I wanted to see you first. You do have some, if, if I may, and he's without. Uh, without permission, he puts his hand on you. Oh, I fooled myself. That's right. He yeah. still sees a few scars, yeah. and he he's, looks a bit concerned about it. And he puts his hand on you, and you do feel, interestingly enough, a warmth coming from the glove, and his and his large hand gently uh, provides some sort of divine energy towards you, but no effect. But you do, you do uh, feel that that familiar energy that Thorin provides. Well, well, this is called for celebration. Oh, are, 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 are we? What are you drinking? Well, I'm 
of having a Jew, um, but we don't know yet if we can we can tell many people. But we I thought you should know because like the one that attacked your 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 shop that was by by tell you as well. It was all of all of okay. There's a lot. To tell. Yeah, her her uh, compatriot. No, that was her. The, the one in the chest. chest. The little yeah, guy. That was her. Oh. She's very tricky. Well. That was Vicelliu. Yeah, the whole time. Right. How do you know that? Because we killed him. You killed yeah. the. He was there, and a couple of other people were there, and they, we, maybe some other people that we knew as well, but also, anyway, when we killed them, they, when they died, they actually turned back into her, but then they, like. Oh, like a little illusion trick I kind of so, thing. Yeah. I know. But actually, it was a demon that helped her do that. So there's another thing we probably have to do. Anyway, so there's lots going on. Um, but I will probably, I probably should wait for the others to tell you. Tell me what? What I just told you. Oh. Oh, no, you can tell them again when I'm, when they wake up. I'm happy to hear that story again and your success and your, and your victory. Um, Can I ask a favor? Uh, 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 and then I will ask one of you. Go for it. Okay. So, um, he just, just like grabs out of his bag and just pulls out the cloak and pulls out three daggers. Um, the obsidian, the steel dagger, and the crystal dagger, and the other parts. Can you tell me what these are? Well, how coincidental. Uh, well, that... That came from my shop, and he points to the robe with the eyes that are blinking, different shapes and different oh, sizes. Well, uh, I, I had it commissioned to be made for a client. Uh, then when uh, I got robbed, as you know, and my shop was kind of burnt, I sort of couldn't find it. Um, it looks the same. Uh, so the, your client owns it then? Well, in a sense. They've only paid for half. Uh, they haven't uh, paid for all of it because I had to tell them that it wasn't there anymore. But I, 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 I wonder, did you happen to come across a pair of gloves as well? Um, no, not me. But the others might have. Oh, okay. Um, I wonder. Um, would it be at all possible if if my client were to have the cloak? Um, if they specifically asked for for that for that commission. If not, then I'd be more than happy to to take some coin from from you you and your group to to compensate for. How much was it? Um, they they paid uh they paid thirty two hundred gold pieces for. It. Well, half half that would be. Uh, 1,600 gold pieces. They gave me six, 1,600. What does it do? Oh, it's really special. Well, if these eyes, if you're wearing it, and they, they can see lots of things, you, your vision when you're looking at something is so much better, as well as that, if there's anyone invisible <laughs> around, they, you can see them. Well, that's just a little enchantment I made, uh, and, and I'm pretty proud of it my, myself. Um, well, what if, what if I give it to you, and then maybe I can commission one myself? Oh, Something yeah. Else. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, how, how long, do, uh, how short of a time frame, because I... I had it uh, made within, well, it took me about um, two months to make it. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Well, that's just fine. Here you go. And he sort of takes it and gives you, well, thanks for that. What about these? Oh, yeah, well, what about them? They look sharp. Are they special? Um... This one looks like it, and he points to the, the pure crystal light blue dagger. Well, this one looks, if if I may, uh, yeah. he sort of puts his 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 large. Be careful with the black one. That one almost killed me. 
Oh, how how did it do that? Oh, okay. I'll keep an eye. I'll keep an eye on it then. And he uh, puts his hand and closes his eyes on the um, that dagger, and he sort of takes a moment. You can see this greenish blue energy encompass his his glove and the dagger, the crystal one, and he opens his eyes after probably about 10 seconds. Well, this one is interesting. It, it, it can, it can, obviously it's quite sharp, but it's got some sort of magic in it that can, um, it's, it's, you'd call it maybe force. It can, it can do more damage by force. More force than if you just to stab someone with oh, it. Oh yeah, I think I know what you mean. Um, it's sort of, it's supposed to happen when it goes into the thing, it just sort of blows it up from the inside. I know that one. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. Oh, you can do that? Yeah, that's kind of more... With the dagger? No, with my spells. Oh, that's just impressive. That's pretty much all I can do, but yeah. Still. Well, yeah. that's... I'll, I won't touch the black one, that looks pretty, pretty nasty. Uh, the steel one, uh, that just looks like a steel dagger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so you can't tell me what the black one does? You told me not to touch it. Well, I just said be careful. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, this has an interesting thing. I probably wouldn't touch it. He didn't, when he, when he took that ten seconds. At this point, I say it does look like she's sort of listening in, you know, just curious, interested. Um, yeah, this one has a weird poison in it. Uh, I don't really recognize it, but it, it's a poison. Oh, is it, like, can I, does it kind of come back, or is it magical, or is it just it, it's poison? It's definitely magical, with herbal... Herbal components made up. Okay. Alright. I'll just take these and... You take them and I would not like to see them again. They look sharp. Okay. Um... What else did you call me down here for, um, but to tell me that I am free of the confines of Bicellu? That I am very, very happy about, and you've done so well as as a group. I'm so super impressed. Um, well, that was kind of it, but um, you can stay here for a while if you aren't busy. Um, because we we've kind of got a little bit of a celebration. Oh, it's kind of old now. <coughs> <laughs> well, it was happening when I called you. Oh, that's all right. I was in Tavik's Landing. I was just at my home. Uh. The, uh, and my shop, my shop is closed, just still getting the repairs. It's almost done, though. Um, but yeah, I was just resting. Uh, Can we come visit you later? Of course, yeah. Um, uh, it's in Middle Tavik's Landing. Uh, uh, it's, it's in the, it's in the district called Sunrise. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a two-story blue-gray stone on top. Okay. You can't miss it. Okay. Well, um, the others just went for a sleep, so they probably won't be up for a while. Um, maybe we'll come after? No, I can, I can wait if you want. I can rest here. Well, I don't really need to rest. But I, I can come back if you want a time for me to come back. Um, actually, yeah, that might be better if that's okay. I mean, I just don't want to make you come all the way back here again. I'm, I, I have some things I may need to do in the card. So, no, I'll, I'll come back and I'll just do my little right. uh, uh, tasks that I need to do. Let's say at the end of the day, then. Okay, okay I'll, I'll early, be here. Early dinner. Early dinner. Sound, sounds good. Okay, bye. Okay. And he sort of awkwardly <laughs> sort of gives, gives us, say, a bit of a nod. Nice to meet you. And, and he uh, gets up. Looks around and starts just walking out. I say, he sort of looks at you and says, "What an interesting creature." Yeah, he's actually really fun. Um, I'm gonna go to bed now. Bye. <laughs> okay. Gotta just get up and walk away. All right. Uh, 
eight hour rest, the, the long rest. Yeah, I'll oh, be an hour. Yep. Longer than that. Sure. Uh, eight hours pass uneventfully. You will rest, sleep uh, takes you, and you are all full health. Your spells known to you again as you wake up in. Uh, ooh, let me see. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two. Uh, just after, just after noon. So just after midday, you all awaken. I leveled up. Is that why you had your finger? Yeah. <laughs> no. If you roll that If you roll, oh my yeah. gosh. No. If you roll that one, you can go backwards. Roll I'm going to say oh. no, but roll anyway. Roll it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, roll it. Roll it. Roll it. I'm so glad that didn't work. Okay. Um, <laughs> I am Dream, dreamlessly right. as well as just you you closed your eyes and woke up without dreaming uh, none of you it was very deep and peaceful, peaceful. Uh, when Thoron wakes up and begins his morning prayers he prepares some different spells for the last session which I can let you know as usual you don't have to every single time you say that when Kayla turns around and he's like it's fine, you can keep that to yourself. And every single time you say, I prepare some new spells. Look, I, I, I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate it, but I trust you. It's worth it, because at the last, not only in the last session, it's with the work or work I know. Sure, yeah, look, I understand, like, like you know, if you feel a bit concerned about not sharing it. But, um, no, I, I trust that you have your spell slots, and as long as you're not overdoing it with uh, seven spell slots in level six spells, then you're fine. Yeah, I just uh, changed my entire monastic tradition. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry. No, good. Go for it, sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I will, however, leave my room. Yep. And I'm going to go to Barclay's room. Yep. Uh, and I'm just going to bang, bang, bang on the door. And then I'm going to shadow jump away. Okay. <laughs> Barclay's, you are rudely, rudely awakened. By the oh thudding God. sound. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> uh, make an attack roll. In the door. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You do a little objects. Objectifier. Uh, that's reasonable. <laughs> so that's 15 plus. That hits. Um, it, it's. It's. Yeah, it goes away. It sticks to the door. No, but you're like. It sticks to the door, only a small portion of the blade goes through. It's quite a thick wooden door, but uh, you you retrieve it, but you are very headachy, very hungover, um, but you are all awake. So, you can feel the warmth of the outside, the cogs, seeping through some of the, uh, in fact, windows, or, or just holes in the wall that lead outward. So you wake up to the, to, in your own um, manner without being disrupt, disrupted apart from Barclays. Uh, and you hear the sounds of in industry once again from the cogs hammering. You can hear yelling and uh, of, of people commanding others to move materials or move a card out of the way in different languages as well or some guttural orcish some um common halfling uh languages that you don't really recognize either um and you wake up what are you doing we go downstairs um and i'm going to is osei still there osei has not moved she is simply now you can see an empty plate in front of her as she has um, seem, seemingly eaten her lunch, but no one's really come around to uh, uh, collect it. But you see the tavern, the cogs fresh, um, the cog and fresh, just fairly bare. Um, the people who normally frequent it for lunch now leaving or now left. Lots of it, lots of dirty plates. Um, uh, on the tables, uh, used cups, etc. There's Osei and just one other table, 
uh, humans and Warforged are surrounding that, and they, uh, they're they simply drinking from mugs and just talking amongst themselves. It's just after. It's probably looking at it probably about 1, one thirty. <laughs> Good. Um, thank, thank you for getting washed. Um, I heard you have eaten and moved if you needed to. I stretched, practiced some of my skills, but otherwise I need not rest. What did you do? Because I was not there for that discussion. Your, I practice um, certain arts of escapism. Uh, practice my with my dexterous hands simply making sure that if I'm ever in need to uh, find a quick exit that one will be available to me even if I feel like I'm trapped uh, I can unbind um, I can unbind my hands of rope quite easily now I can escape chains if they are put on me uh, I know certain magics that will uh, dispel magical binds. I can move quite quickly and uh, between places quite quickly now. I've increased my fitness. Uh, the people who I am trained by, uh, misfits, mind you, but skilled, they have taught me much about these things. They have their own certain areas of challenges that they provide and I practice in them. That's really cool. I can't escape very well. I can run fast. You're halfway there. Mm -hmm. Running is, uh, is, a, is a, an, an amazing form of uh, escape. You just need to, if you find yourself in more of a difficult situation, find your way out of that. A locked room, for example. I'm not very strong either. I threw my clothes downstairs. Um, I noticed, and I think you just slipped. Do yourself a favour. Be kinder to yourself. No, trust me, I'm really not strong. <laughs> very much not strong at all. At all. Well, I see your companions are with you. Welcome. Oh, shit. Good day. Yes. I've got my cloak like really rugged up. No gunner. Okay, yeah. Um have you been really here all night in the morning? She simply nods. Well in the morning we were we went to bed quite early. Early this morning. Time frame escapes me. It's about one thirty. And what would you do for the rest of the day then? You guys are pretty drunk last night. I would hazard a guess, I would be, f uh, unless you are all planning on doing separate things in Shan and uh, resting or uh, finding an interest in learning something, I will accompany one of you or I can do what you ask. If you need me to uh, keep a watch in a particular place, I can go there. Um, or if you just want me to go my own way for now, I can do that as well. Didn't I take the city of Jaskin? Yes, and I myself I wish to follow up to find, find a friend. Um, I think you may need to stick close to us for now. What, 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 what can you help us with? Not me, not myself, but Sean has a uh, invariable and plentiful supply of master workers. Oh, yes. um, you can learn all manner of things. You can learn how to blacksmith. You can learn how to uh, run, jump, and escape things. You can learn uh, of the alchemical uh, skill. You can learn knitting. You can learn uh, husbandry. You can learn all, all, all sorts of things. You can learn how to wield and make poisons, if you so <coughs> wish. Uh, Shan is very, uh, uh, the opportunities in Shan are endless. You can learn more magics or you can purchase many things 
legal or not, in wherever you find merchants. I would say, I wonder if you spent much time here and learned from many people in this district, is that correct? Yes. Why should I seek them out when I could just learn from you? Oh, I, I have not learned all these things. These are just things that you can find. I only know personally uh, how to be more, more of a uh, more of someone who will more easily unbind and run away if needed. Um, would I understand that as a particular skill? Not necessarily. You would imagine that uh, she would be just more dexterous as as a skill. As, as uh, to the to the barest bones, she would just be more dexterous. Thulum. 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 I, I must admit, I am slightly worried about him. Um, I'm getting conflicted information from our friend uh, Friso and also Vaiseli. Um, from what I remember, Vaiseli was looking after Menedes. Menedes? Menedes. Menedes. Um, <coughs> However, I asked. When I asked uh, Frieza to deliver a package to him, he did, but under the impression that um, Count Babby was looking after him. So I'm not sure of his health at the moment. Did you pay him for this armor? I have paid him. We must find him. Finding him, yes, but he's dead. <laughs> Um, I have no idea where to start, except for speaking with Rizio. And he is uncontactable at the moment. When the time comes, we will reach out to him. Unless we go to the lower, the upper coast? Where Menides was? Yeah, not, not below the coast, but lower Jura. Lower Jura. Lower Jura is probably where I start my investigation. On the way, though, I do need to stop off at a um, woodworker to grab a prize for a friend. Um, I wouldn't mind going back to only if we have time, time at some point. No, no urgency. Go, well, there is urgency. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind going back to my monastery um, and just checking if things have gotten worse at some point. I'll accompany you with this. Okay. We don't have to stay for long, I just want to check. Um, I, I also... You're going to come to the Maya Temple? Yeah. Okay. Well, that would be a good idea. I also... I don't know if you guys remember, I'm going to lower my voice quite quietly when I say this. I'm going to say, I don't know if you guys remember, but I found this half a wand. I would like to try and find the other half. I don't know if this is a short-term thing, this could take a while. But I have a look? Don't break it. I'm gonna like... Well, well first I'm gonna check if it's still there. It is, it uh, feels familiar in your hand. And I'm gonna like, when I pull it out, I'm gonna like, shield it with my clothes. Make a sleight of hand check, please. I'm not really so fucking shit tonight. Uh, slide of hand, did you say? Yep. Yeah, that's an 11. 11? I'm a fucking shadow monk. <laughs> it's an 11. Rook, um, you see Amara do a weird gesture with her hand and she holds the cloak up quite high. Um, you can very clearly see this um, short piece of, of blackened wood in her hand. Um, but she's sort of looking around and not really focusing on trying to hide it per se. And she hands it to you. Have, have, have I seen, seen this? Before, anyway? Doesn't look familiar to you, no. It's simply a, probably a, a piece of wood about half a meter, and it's sort of bent in the middle slightly, and sort of goes into a, like a V shape, a, a very wide V shape. Um, 
shape. And you can see the, the wood itself looks like it's been in a fire. It looks like it's been blackened. Although, um, where you normally would find a normal piece of wood would uh, blacken on your hands and, and, and soot would appear on it, it doesn't seem to. It seems to be simply clean. Um, it's, it's not familiar to me at all. It doesn't seem to be, no. Hey, actually. Can't you do that thing where you rotate things? I don't, well, I mean, I don't think, or know if this would work because you're holding it, but maybe you could try to use this to find the other half. Is that, I don't know how your magic works. Maybe you didn't question. Hmm. I couldn't locate an object on an object, not really. That is the description that you have, uh, in the have that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> You can certainly try. Um, you can try if you'd like, and see if you are successful. Amara, can you give me any more information about this? Um, I mean, it came to me in a very empty circumstance. Um, it's solid. <laughs> No, it seems to be not hollow. It seems to be uh, a solid piece of piece of material. It's it's weird. It's much much lighter than it's like a balsa wood light. Yeah. Uh, it's not very heavy at all. Can you tell me more? Well, it's not mine. It is. Who's taking it? I didn't take it off anyone. Wow. Really aggressive. Um. It is of my god, um, Elena, and it could be used to defeat the dream in the dark, if I find the other half. Could you tell me more of what the other half was on? I haven't seen it. Have I seen it? I haven't seen the other half. You have not. Have I felt like any other fools since... It's interesting. Um, weirdly enough, you... Apart from that initial um, sort of straight, remember that was there was a yeah, feeling that you had that it was a straight down sense. Um, you then exited that place and felt nothing more. And even now, there doesn't seem to be a um, a sense of direction. Up until up until now, there hasn't been anything. The temple of Illuminata. Wow, that's really <laughs> offensive. Um, that's still offensive. Illuminata. I'm not familiar with this. Um, Il yeah. And there we find. Uh, I take two points of sight. <laughs> <laughs> we would be fine a picture of something. What's the picture? Or a tapestry. I doubt it. I don't know. Would I? A huge gold statue. An enormous gold statue. What? Kind of temple of things. Um, make a, just make a straight intelligence check for me, Amara, please. Probably not going to go well. It's probably my best roll of the night, and it's a 13. You recall in the room above and the very top of Ilyanar's temple mm. where you were sucked into oh, the Yep, mm. when you were sucked into the uh, a plane that was fuzzy and staticky of the dreaming dark prior to entering that you remember a painting that was of Ilyana that you didn't remember seeing before, like you don't remember it until mm. this moment because your focus was on this necklace. Mm. But you remember the glancing along the sides and you remember seeing a glorified picture of what Ilyana has been depicted as. But this p the particular picture has been one of an older woman, um, white, long hair, 
uh, almost uh, diamond-like in, in sparkle. Um, this kind face, tall, white robe. And on her person, on her side, as her hands were down on her side, this golden rod mm -hmm. that was much longer than the one that Rook's holding now. And it, it was golden and at the very end of it, a beautiful um, triangular looking crystal. And the shape of it seems to match slightly okay. what Rook's holding. Um. It's really weird that you've just asked me that because I just, it's kind of like I almost felt it's black that. Um, if we go to the temple, I can show you. I can show you a, I can show you a painting. Could you describe to me this part, right? You have knowledge enough now to describe what the one would look like. Yeah, so, what um, what would look like. It is a long golden rod with a triangular crystal at the end. It's pretty awesome. It's, it's and the, this, the end of this star? Or it matches this. this. It matches it? To an extent. It matches um, the shape. You get the feeling that a piece is missing from it. Though it should be longer. Yeah. So after she I'm going to be like, it's this long. Yeah. This is where it is. Yeah. This is, this is the part that I think looks the most like what you're holding. So, Amara, can I, I hold you up and pack the stuff for a moment and go to Hobbes. I go through my rack sack from my side and pull out this necklace. Rack sack. And um, does this emblem look familiar to you? And I hold up the necklace with the simple iron looking chain with the bronze looking square with gold on it, is it? Hmm. It doesn't seem to. I'll try what I can here, and I try and locate an object with the what okay. she described and yep. what I have. Yep. I say no, Mara. I, I've never tried to locate an object that isn't formed. I, I don't know what that chances we are. That's okay. I appreciate you trying. You close your eyes and concentrate on the piece that you're holding, and your mind, for a moment, feels this piece of power in your hands, but there's no understanding or familiarity with it and your mind becomes blank. And after a moment you feel like the spell did not take effect as the, even the description of it is, you seem to think it's not enough to, uh, to find a pinpoint. Such power. <laughs> and, uh, I'm holding it and thinking, you know, Look disappointed and look back to Mahara and gesture at that. I'm sorry. I don't know about this thing. All I know is that it once had power. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the only place that I ever kind of really felt anything was in that wonderful flash. Maybe I should pop back right there. Well, it appears we have some time. Maybe we should gather our things and head for oil. Where's it now? Where is it? It's living past the house. You know this? I should have this. I say, is Gunnar alive? I assume so. Uh, I left him alive. <laughs> and she sort of... Um, almost, she, she gets up out of her chair and sort of looks panicked for a moment and just immediately goes up to where... She did see, Gunnar, that you did uh, go into a particular room. Um, and, sh and you wake up with the sound of fairly um, persistent knocking on the door and a whisper Gunnar, Gunnar, you, you in there? Mm. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. 
and uh, you all see Osei come racing back down and, and sort of nodding. He's fine, he's fine. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that it was a bad joke. No, no, not at all. Barclays, I don't know if you remember this, but last night you asked me to put prickly peaks on that window sill over there. Yes. <laughs> Make a deception check for him. You also took money off myself. And, oh, that's true. You know that I wasn't, I remembered this. Make, Make a deception. celebration started after I took your money. <laughs> you know this. Deceive, any, try and deceive anyway, for him. <laughs> can I count as deceive? Yeah, yeah, you can insight. You can make an insight check. <laughs> that is an eight. eight. <laughs> Um, make it, make it an insight check. Go for it. It could be worse. <laughs> so much worse than that one. It's a two. Barclays, you were, you were drinking throughout the card game, and, and because of that drunken state you were in, look, you don't remember. You don't remember, and obviously it wouldn't be, probably wouldn't be in your nature to have someone borrow, but Thorum's words seem to ring true. For any, for whatever reason. Ah, ah that is an option. One square. square. What's the option? <laughs> it means, it means I'm spinning a yarn. <laughs> 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 that was great. Um, either, either way, way why don't you pull this up now? Um, um Prickly Pete is over there. there. Maybe, Maybe you should just tend to him. We'll, we'll put something in him last night. I'll go over to him. Are you going up to the plant, or are you? Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm a little dusty still. Mm. So I'm just like, <coughs> oh, yes, the cast is fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> please, please <laughs> make that really, distinction. Really good, really good point. But actually, it is just. But it, but yeah, just mention if you're casting it. That's all. Yeah. Oh yeah, you you. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's your gesture. Yeah. 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 I got I'm here. Actually, Um. Oh, he's red. Red clothes. Green. Can I, can I help you? Yeah, the man with the green cloak that gave you water, did he hurt you? No, he gave me water. It's okay. You feel good? I feel, I feel like a plant. Hey, I miss you. Come here, buddy. I'm gonna pick him up and I put him back in my... You're away. Yeah, it's, he's, he's, he did not respond. How did you think of him? Quickly, I don't know why. It'll be okay. Why? Do you know about this? Yeah. What? You tap, you, you, you tap, 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 you you Mm. I'll, I'll accept, accept this is true for now. Uh, you also, also said, said some very questionable things about me last night, Barclays. You, you can never, never deny your attraction to the Emperor again. Anyway, anyway let's, let's go. go. See you. Uh, Amara, Amara walks off before you can respond. Yeah. Um, what's everyone doing? Um, question. So, about potentially learning something new. Um, obviously, perhaps proficiencies or even peace. Is that right? So, yeah, so look, really, time is, time is uh, the main factor and coin. So, uh, it, with your knowledge of Shan and your understanding of the uh, specifics of teachers of certain skills, um, yes, so skills, in, uh, when we're talking about your lists, you can find certain people to... Um, uh, to train you, to expand your knowledge on your skill list. You can 
have an actual skill which can pertain to blacksmithing, alchemy, poison making, gambling, um, like increasing your knowledge and understanding and skill in those areas. What else have I got? Hold on, where is it? I've got a list here. Uh, I know, I know. We can be proficient in Why did I even do that? <laughs> Why did I do that? God. Uh, okay, everyone, uh, you ever know, which is that? Terrible. Yeah, well, that's right. It's 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 canon now, isn't it? Yeah. Crap. Oh, jeez, where is it? Uh, I know. It's so good. It really needs to start. Okay. Uh, blacksmithing, al alchemy, herbalism, navigation. Forgery, disguise, um, artesian tools, uh, which can really pertain to uh, just, you know, make up your imagination and I can let you know. Uh, thieves tools are included in that, or you can just do something, uh, I don't know, a bit more common. Uh, you can learn how to make shoes, you can be a glass blower, you can be a cook, mason, painter, potter, tinker, weaver, woodcarver, um, so many things. Uh, but be aware that certain skills come at a price, uh, depending on where you go to, to learn them. Uh, so there's a specific list of tools that are, that's in the player's handbook. Look through there, and you can probably learn how to use those. A new set, or if you've already got the set, new set, new set, or improve what you currently have. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it really is. Sean, as you know, Barclay is probably more than the rest, a, a, a city of opportunity, a city of many, many facets of, uh, um, yeah, of, of things that you can okay. learn to do. Well, in that case, I'll see you guys in three sessions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you later. So if you give me, if you give me an understanding of something, that you've been possibly wanting to do. Um, it doesn't have to be this evening. It can be. It can be over the next course of the next week. You can do other things in the meantime. Um, let me know, and, and then you know, uh, I can let you know specifics before we come back to the table. Eight levels. Is that right? Rogue, huh? Interesting. Um, uh, it, I mean, look, I don't know if you're serious or not, but uh, <laughs> we can certainly have a chat about it. And Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's hung over you jousting? You. I'm hungover. No one's too hungover. Okay, well, if you want to do the jousting thing, let's go do the jousting thing. Well, everyone else. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Yes. Good afternoon. I guess I'll be coming on for dinner. Oh! That's nice. How is he? Good. Uh, so no, he's meeting us here for dinner. Okay. So early dinner. Now, now do, do I have knowledge of how long aerial jousting takes? And could it possibly be that we could get there and come back to dinner? Uh, <laughs> look, I'll get you to make a just an intelligence check again. This is just for, let's call it. Uh, yeah, the history's fine. History's fine. This is just for local knowledge. Local knowledge of, of events and. It doesn't sound like a good dinner that afternoon. That's very cost. Hey! Hey! 18! Uh, yeah, uh, there are different types of jousting. There are many ar arenas that you can compete competitively. There is a practice arena if you feel like you need to take some time to, you know, uh, aerial jousting, you, you, you know, keep your balance and practice balancing on whatever beast that they offer you. 
the the type the type of animal that you are to be training on can range for, from a griffin to a hippogriff to a pegasus um, all very well trained creatures uh, from um, House Jurasco, uh, the the animal handling. Um, <laughs> yes, House. Uh, let me actually let me just see if I got that right. Um, I, I'll, I'll check later, but um, I think I got it right. Uh, and basically, you can practice against uh, people who are skilled in in that uh, in that. Yeah, and and yeah, and, and you have to. You know that you have to perform some feats and possibly roll dice yeah. to see whether you are uh, trained enough to be accepted into these competitions. Um, now, timing-wise, the practice you can take as long as you want. If you actually enter a competition, you have to give yourself about half a day, but, and that includes between matches. Uh, do you want to ask him if he knows that? Hey, hey, what do you know? Tell us. Um, yeah, look, um, there's, yeah, there's that's no, a possibility. This is my first jousting school, so... Because <laughs> I think if I could out joust you. Ah, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I think, well, if everyone else is um, keen to at least see who's going to fail and who will win here. Yes, let's go, let's do it. And we'll come back tomorrow for dinner. For dinner. I would say, uh, is over here in conversation, she says, um... But uh, jousting, exciting as it is, um, I wonder, have you uh, seen to, or do you want to see to the belongings of Bicelu first, or would you prefer to take some time and uh, look at this later with me, or we, we, it can be uh, something we do later this evening if you'd prefer. Right, okay, so, so let's, let's do that, that. that's fine. But can we, can we see the jousting? I'll, I'll joust you. Right. Right. Can we, can we, can we, can we, we can go straight from across to see the jousting if you like. Yeah. Alright. Let's, 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 let's take care, care of business, business first. first. Um, should we do this a bit more privately somewhere? Uh, yeah, yeah we, can we can go up to my room, room if you want. That'd be, a, that'd be, that would be wise. Okay. Okay. Can you come on? I should like come with all right, you all make your way in a line to above up the stairs into Amara's room um, with all of you in there. It is quite cramped, but you all make a bit of a, a circle and sit um, and close the door behind you. Uh, the bag containing pieces of parchment and other items potions and such in front of you, Barclays. Mm -hmm. Can we pull out the actual cross here as well? Now, which one? The um, one that I... Oh, okay. I'm not Osage. That's right, Osage. Um, um, and I'm just going to say, maybe we should try this one first, because it was a steal. Ha! <laughs> that wasn't a joke. I'm <clears throat> laughing. I'm not sure I'm getting there every time I'm going to go back. I find the funny when you stole those. Let's go. Okay. Let's try to open it. Alright. Uh, make a strength check, please. Oh, what's that? What did you say? You were telling me to say that he was strong. As you attempt to unbind it, it actually resists. So I'm going to hand it to the next person and say, who, who am I next to right now? You can, you can have your own understanding of who you're next to if you want to. Give it a go. Let's take it. And we're all in the same room together. Gorham, uh, I'm done standing there. You're hammer at you. Now, I think it's Edo. I'm pretty sure it's Edo. Good at it, Okay, I'll just get you to make a strength check, Thorin. This is like a bonbon. A little bit. Yeah. Fake bonbon. 
Nineteen. Okay. As you, <laughs> as you attempt to open this parchment, Thorum and Rook, in your hand, you feel this resistance, <laughs> and you feel as though, even with the great strength Thorum that you provided, for some reason, it doesn't seem to want to reveal its secrets. Is this a similar resistance that we all felt when we tried to open the first prophecy? What, um, the one that we had to take to Dragon's Crown? Or is this a different type of resistance? It, it doesn't seem familiar to you, no. I can do a stand, but why can't we she sort of holds out her hand silently. Right. She takes the entire parchment and sort of weighs it up in her in her hands for a moment. Well, uh, this is the one that you say she was writing in. She held it up, and I, um, I just Well, it seems even in death she might have powers. She might have bound it by some sort of magic so it would not be opened, perhaps not wanting us to see its... Can I, I was going to say, um, I've never really tried this before, but I've kind of been practicing on inert things. Maybe I should try on something like this. Yeah, I think it's fine. You should try on it. <laughs> oh, no. I'm buying. It's Lily Star. <laughs> it's uh, just a spell magic. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. Got it. Uh, I'm buying. Just trying to figure out where that spell's from. Um, I don't know all the spells, by the way. Uh, so, I need you, please, to roll me a d20 and add your spell casting modifier. Yes, please. Sixteen. Sixteen. All right. Say Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you. I do, I do believe in <laughs> Okay. So as you cast dispel magic, you feel initially that there is certainly something that is trapping the words of the tr of the ancient draconic speech within your with the uh, within your sights, but you concentrate on undoing whatever binds that by cell you instilled and it works slowly the silken string around the parchment unbinds on its own and you can see that it starts to rise on its own accord as well and you find yourself looking at an unbound parchment and it slowly unfurls two sides of this um, piece and you can see now already a familiar set of characters intricate that are moving out of the parchment glowing back in and forming a, a particular sign on the piece of paper like ink uh, like someone would be writing on it but then you see weird Unusual things. Can I try and read it? Yes, you can. <coughs> yep. Well, the the right hand has done its job. So uh, unless you <laughs> unless you unless you want to just do it for performance, you can you can keep that hand up, but you don't need to. Um, comprehend languages. Mm -hmm. Cool. You can put your hand down. No. So. <laughs> Oh, 
actually. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do it like this, actually. Okay. Just bring some salt on it. Yes, yes, I'm salting the parchment. Nice. Okay. okay. A pinch of soup and salt. Good. You open up the parchment, and immediately, as those characters are filling the air, you all see the same phenomena as the letters and the characters become larger and larger around the room. They float above the air like wisps of cloud glowing and disappear as they, as they move past you out of sight. And you can see that the parchment spins slowly, a, a, a vision that you haven't seen before in your eyes, all of your eyes, cloud over. You find yourselves elsewhere once again. around you a landscape of blackened destruction spears in the ground around you flags flags of breland of king boronel's armies bodies beside weapons arrows littering the earth smells of fire in your in your cloudy vision of this expanse beside the humans winged creatures of wicked faces leathery skins beside broken pieces of war forged with red capes and then in the distance you see what looks to be over over the horizon moving quickly towards you an enormous leathery winged figure gliding slowly with gargoyle features and black whispers a uh, whisk uh, whiskers on his uh, on the side of his mouth and on top of that a staff of gold with a dragon's claw within and a huge diamond within that uh, as the claw is holding it as it comes closer by Selyu herself atop this creature this arc of devil in the flesh as they ride towards you and then as these two figures are quite close and they appear above you all you look down at your hands and your your hands are blackened as well like the earth beneath you and then you see your hands simply disintegrate and slowly like dust in the wind they disappear the wind picks up and takes whatever skin dust away from you and you look at it and you don't feel pain You only feel loss as pieces of you start to move and shimmer out of existence. You then see this creature, this arc devil, lift a hand around this this enormous claw around him and grab the mistress, throwing her onto the ground and a scream erupts around you and you can hear in your ears like it's right next to them and a ringing sound takes you and you feel yourself holding your ears as as her scream this source coming from my cell you herself just fills the entire your entire being and she says no i wrote it it is not supposed to and she gets completely uh, underneath the paw of this arc devil and she gets pushed further and further into the ground and you can see suddenly 
as her body parts separate and a pulp appears where her body once was. And you can see that this creature, this arc demon, doesn't seem to take notice of you. For a moment, silence as the screens stop and the creature looks to the left and to the right. And then a shimmer as your vision shifts again to somewhere else. And this time, Rook, you see before you in nothingness, as though you're standing on air, but there's a slight wind, but the someone, someone is walking towards you, a war forged, the Lord of Blades with swords and armor stuck on himself, this large being of metal and somehow not as threatening to you as you feel he would have been. When all of a sudden he takes his hand and shifts his face and half of his face is still metal and the other half is a figure you've not seen for a long time. It is Agnarak, your third. And you're back in the room. Amara. You're up, buddy. You see. Thanks. <laughs> you see before you what looks to be a small pool and an expanse of nothingness. And through the pool, as you look down and you see this sort of shimmer within it of reflection, you look up and you simply see a large sun looking down upon you. But the sun is a beautiful crystal that's multifaceted and familiar to you. And you just seem to want to put your hand within the pool itself and as you do it burns and as acid would burn and you hold up what looks to be simply you feel as it's as though it's the Kalashtar race in its entirety you're holding within your hand all of them all of their souls and a whisper in your ear says for our deaths. That is the price. And you are in the room again. Barclays. You're up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you see before you a beautiful ice and steel fortress floating in the air of nothingness above you and you find yourself all of a sudden at its doorways, its towers and walls made up of a beautiful, amazing, uh, crystal-like but cold metal. And the doors open and through it this floating being of blue skin familiar to you but different taller, more grand, and this orange golden beard, regal in its appearance, and this uh, golden circular um, headpiece with, uh, with tassels coming out of it, this floating genie coming towards you gives you one nod, and you can see that within a scabbard he's holding a wind sword and he says to you he says finally my son 
Thorum, you look beyond and you see, and you have an, an instant, you hear an instant roar from your mace, one of triumph. And it says to you, Doribaliux, the Coatl, an ancient dead race of dragons, says to you, look, look here. See where they live. See where they hide. And you can see now this enormous city that's hanging down from an enormous cavern with lights shimmering within windows of these upside down towers. This enormous web below it. And on the web, eating this enormous mound of heads, humanoid heads, is this skeletal face of an enormous female spider as she takes bits of these beheaded things and just starts devouring them and you awake and gunner <laughs> you look beyond the room and you look far beyond and you see a small room a familiar room and you are bound bound by leather straps on a wooden uh a wooden sort of board of some kind and you look around you and part going past you is a large insect-like creature and you feel pain in your head as it you know that some sort of uh, attack has made you weaker not physically but something in your mind just winces in pain and you see stepping towards you a familiar face but one that changes every single moment every step from the face of Bicelu to the face of Count Bavi to the face of Fariso Doldoletta to the face of King Borinel to the face of Thurum to the face of Barclays to Amara to Rook to Osei to Regafsel and over and over and over again and you feel yourself just defeated as this old man looks at you, his nose right at yours. These shifting faces, you feel dizzy from the sight. And he says, I am close now. And guys, that's where we're going to leave it tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's where we're going to leave it at that. Gambling. Ending with the prophecy. Um, ending with that. And you all find yourself back in the room. Um, thanks very much. And I already can't wait till next week. Yeah. Damn it, why? such a tense ending. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> why does a week have to be that long? I don't understand. If only we could play twice a week. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Look, as much as I'd love it. No, no, as much as I'd love to, I, I, just, I, I just wouldn't have a life after that. And, <laughs> and I, and I kind of like the, the, you know, my outside time too. Um, but thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate it if you, if you stuck around. That's really, really cool. But obviously it's on Twitch, it's on YouTube, it's on links are everywhere now. Um, thank you everybody. for that. I love the tonight. I found that to be really, really cool. I hope you guys had a good time to, you know, just ac actually talk amongst yourselves and not, yeah. you know, be in a tense situation all the time. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks everyone. I'm going to end it there. But um, have a good night or a morning, wherever you are, and see you next week, and have yeah, a good guys, thank you for watching. Yes. Oh, yes, uh, uh, any shout-outs before we leave? Uh, it says something.
No, I think I think that's for us not afterward. To, not to the stream. <laughs> All right, guys. Cool. Thank you, everybody. See ya. Take care. Ciao.